Well, folks, I think you can consider this a bombshell announcement. Iowa quarterbacks coach Ken O'Keefe has decided to step away from his position with the Iowa football program. Now, I want to warn everybody, I'm having some, some internet issues here with Signal for some reason. And of course, uh, news always breaks when you least expect it and when you least want it. Certainly, I was not going to ignore this and not go live, but uh, excuse if the internet issues uh, persist. Hopefully, we can get those squared away. But uh, the breaking news again, Ken O'Keefe has stepped away from his position as quarterback's coach. And in just a couple of minutes, we're going to allow some more people to, to uh, filter on here. In a couple of moments, I will read you the entire press release from the University of Iowa. Um, I'm also going to open up the phone lines here in a second. So um, hang tight. If you're waiting here, um, we, first of all, we appreciate you being here. Please share this on social media, okay? Um, we're desperately trying to get to 1,000 subscribers before March. Um, if you can help us by sharing it on social media, that would sure be appreciated. Also, hit the like button below this video. Um, and subscribe if you have not already done so. But again, sharing our show out on social media and word of mouth helps our show and our channel grow. So again, the latest is Iowa quarterbacks coach Ken O'Keefe has stepped away from his position as quarterbacks coach at the University of Iowa. Now, let's get to that press release that I promised you from the University of Iowa. And this was sent at uh, 4.03 p.m. Central Time today from, again, the University Athletic Department. It says, University of Iowa quarterbacks coach Ken O'Keefe is stepping away from his on-field role as quarterbacks coach. The announcement was made Wednesday by Moon family head football coach Kirk Ferentz. O'Keefe will assume an off-the-field role with the Hawkeye football program. O'Keefe recently finished his 18th season as a member of the Iowa coaching staff. He was a member of Ferentz's first staff at Iowa, serving as offensive coordinator from 99 to 11, as well as wide receivers coach in 99, and quarterbacks coach from 2000 to 2011. Five of the top 10 single-season quarterback performances at Iowa have come under O'Keefe's leadership. This is a quote from uh, head coach Kirk Ferentz. My entire family, or excuse me, from, from Ken O'Keefe. My entire family and I are incredibly grateful to Coach Ferentz, the players, especially the quarterbacks I've been privileged to work with, the staff, the University of Iowa, and the great Hawkeye football fans for all of their support these many years when you love what you do and where you do it, when you love being around the staff and working with tremendous men like I do day in and day out, it is hard to walk away. But I am confident that the time is right for me to step off the field and embrace a new opportunity. Now, here's a quote from um, head coach Kirk Ferentz. He says, and I quote, Ken has been an important part of our football program for almost two decades he was one of the key components of building our program's foundation 23 years ago and has been a friend for far longer than that. Ken hired me to be on his staff at Worcester Academy in 78, and it has been a professional and personal honor to work alongside him all of these years. The release goes on to say O'Keefe left the Iowa program in 11, 2011 for a coaching position in the NFL. He returned to Iowa City to coach quarterbacks prior to the 2017 season. Kirk Ferentz goes on. He says, Ken rejoining our program from the NFL was a big bonus. While we miss having him on the field on Saturdays, we are looking forward to him continuing to share his perspective and knowledge to benefit our entire program. The release goes on. The University of Iowa will honor the terms of O'Keefe's contract. O'Keefe's coaching career has spanned 45 years across several levels of football. He was named Division III National Coach of the Year in 1990 after leading Allegheny College to the Division III National Championship. O'Keefe goes on. He says, this Hawkeye program is in great shape heading into the future. I look forward to helping out behind the scenes while also getting to spend some time, some long overdue time, with my wife, Joanne, and our family. And it finishes off here. Iowa posted a 10-4 and overall record in 21, winning the West Division of the Big Ten Conference and earning an invitation to the 2022 Verbo Citrus Bowl. All right, so again, a lot in there. Um, but to sum it all up, Iowa is in need of a quarterback's coach. 
They are in need of a new quarterbacks coach. So who is it going to be? Uh, that's going to be the question. I know the, the popular names that are going to get brought up, Chuck Long, Drew Tate, Bob Stoops. Bob Stoops, I don't think there's any chance on this earth <laughs> that he would come to Iowa to be a quarterbacks coach. Um, I also don't know, not no offense to Bob Stoops, but I don't know that he's qualified to be a quarterbacks coach. I don't think that's really what, you know, he's a, first of all, he's a defensive back in college. Um, so I, I think if you asked Bob Stoops, he would probably say he's, he's in no way, um, in, in the right guy to be a quarterbacks coach at the big 10 level. Cole brings up Mario Verducho. Is that how he pronounces his last name, Cole? Um, he doesn't have a job yet. I don't really know much about Mario. Um, so I can't really answer that question. I do. Let me go ahead and throw the phone line open here. So if you want to give us a call, feel free to call in and offer your perspective on this huge announcement. 515-635-1601. 515-635-1601. And just seeing if I can uh, figure out what's going on with our internet. I think if, if somebody can give me a, a read on where we are with signal, looks like we're doing okay. Looks like we're doing okay. And now it, uh, if it's not okay on your end, please let me know, but uh, I'm doing what I can to keep the stream going. Um, and we'll go ahead and take our first call here. I believe. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the storm. Who's on the line. Hey, Corey, it's the real MVP. How you doing? I'm good. How are you, sir? Man, you are on it. You It's like you were waiting for us to go live. Oh, that's what happens when you subscribe and you got that little bell that gives <laughs> you alerts. Attaboy. And Set if the you example. don't want to be able to beat me on calls, you can also do that. Maybe you can get Corey's channel to 1,000 subscribers. There you go. Thank you, sir. You, <laughs> what What is your reaction to the news? Well, um, Iowa has hope. For the uh, football season coming up, that's good. I think all because Ken, having all because Ken is leaving, that just that just automatically gives you hope if you're an Iowa fan. Yeah, you. I mean, change some. If no changes are made, that's probably the worst thing that could happen. Because if you're struggling in any field, regardless if it's football, just in any business, and you don't make a change, that's the worst thing that can happen. I agree. So, I mean, yeah, first of all, doing something. and for the record, I don't think anybody can say definitively. The only people that know the answer to this question would be Kirk Ferentz, Ken, and and probably some others within the program. But I think the question is, did I don't want to assume that Ken O'Keefe did not resign of his own volition. I mean, I'm not going to assume that. But I think it's a fair question to ask, did Ken O'Keefe leave? Was that his idea to step down? into a different position. Yeah. Who, who said, who said, Hey, I should, you should leave first. Was it like a, I, well, you was going to fire him or possibly get back do a buyout type thing and be like, no, I just want to step away. So that way it looks more respectable. Or did he just want to leave after working for 45 years? I mean, we'll never know the answer probably, but it changes by dynamic of what could happen to Iowa football next year. Well, I think you and I are both aware that uh, Ken O'Keefe is in his seventies. So it's not yeah. like this move is just like shocking. I mean, it, it is a big, big news item. But the fact of the matter is, um, and I had speculated on this, um, on I think I was on the air when I speculated on this. Maybe can, somebody can attest to this. And it's not like it was me prophesying. Um, there was always a chance this was going to happen because Ken isn't getting any younger. I mean, he's in his 70s. He's, yeah, he didn't look like, and I've had several people who were at the games on a regular basis, comment this to me in the past, that Ken O'Keefe did not look like he was having fun much of the year. Well, so, well, um, I mean, he's, I mean, he's deserved, if he wants to step away, he's deserved. I mean, he's been a, he's done a lot more for the game of football than most people will ever do in their lifetime, regardless of what you think about his tenure at Iowa. Absolutely. And, and here's what people get. Here's, I'm not going to get all sappy, but here's what people have to understand exactly what you just said even if people if even if you as a fan wanted Ken O'Keefe gone i think you have to give him credit for what he did here he was a big part of a lot of success here including the, those really fun years back in the early 2000s when this program really got turned around 
And I think he deserves credit, but I think at some point it's, I keep telling people it's okay to want change. You're entitled to want change. Now you're not, what you're not entitled to do is to force change, right? Especially as a fan. I mean, you know, even if you're a big donor, you can't just force change. There's more than, than you in this world and in this fan base. But I I think you have to appreciate what Ken O'Keefe has done here. And, and, um, I, I just wish him the best. I, I hope he, whatever his involvement with the program is, I, I hope that he stays in Iowa City. I'm assuming he's not, I can't imagine him going and getting another job. I would have to think this is probably it. And he sticks around and helps the program as an advisor or wh- whatever that role may be. And it was an off-field role, but he helps the school as an, envi- an advisor. And I would assume he loves Iowa City and he'll stick around here, which would be great. Right. And I mean, that's all you can ask for him. And I mean, he's, he's earned the right to retire and live his life however the way he wants to. I'm happy for him. I'm happy for his family. I'm happy the, for his kids. If he's got any to spend time with them finally, because I mean, the wear and tear of the football season is a 24 seven, three sixty five job, especially so. as a college coach, as a college coach. I mean, oh, yeah. it's, it's so much different. So yeah, I mean, um, it just didn't seem to a lot of people, again, I'm not even speaking for myself, but a lot of people made that comment. It didn't well, seem like he was enjoying the, himself. Corey, I've got to ask you the most obvious question. Um, what is the odds of Sp- is Spencer Petras starting next year now? <laughs> God, we, we got 10, 11 minutes into the show before that question came up. I, You know, I think Spencer it, Petras... It's the obvious question. Everyone in the chat's probably thinking it, Corey. Well... I, I think uh, I think the odds are Spencer Petras starts. I mean, th- th- those are the if you're if you're asking me what I think is the most likely scenario, that's the most likely scenario for me right now. Um, I, Can I you see put Spencer a percentage on it. Um, sixty five percent. I mean, it's not. Okay. I mean, so it's, but it, before it was a sure thing, basically, and now it's not a sure thing, is what I'm hearing. Well, the only time I've said it was a sure thing was was uh, in going into the bowl game because everybody kept talking about, oh, who's going to start? Is it going to be Padilla? And and I just didn't – I think a lot of people agreed with me and that it was kind of ridiculous. It was just a – we're making a story out of nothing. There was no reason to believe that Alex Padilla was starting that game. And not only did he not start, he didn't play. Um, but we have seen Kirk in the past make a change from one season to the next. We saw it with Jake Rudock to, to C.J. Beathard. It doesn't happen as much midseason. I know – Jake Christensen was benched um, for, for Ricky Stanzi, but that's, again, that just doesn't happen very often. Um, I, I have a hard time seeing Padilla being the guy, but I mean, it, look, I'd have to think it's an open competition. Kirk Ferentz is no dummy. He understands the quarterback position is not giving enough. And regardless if uh, Ken O'Keefe stepped aside um, and that was his idea, and I like to give him the benefit of the doubt that it was, regardless of the reasons, if it was just to spend more time with the family or if it's he just wasn't enjoying the game anymore, whatever the case may be. Um, I, I would like to think that Kirk acknowledges that this is an opportunity, although he's going to miss his his good friend, Ken. I mean, he's obviously good friends with Ken O'Keefe. He's going to miss him on that on-field role. This is an opportunity in Kirk's final years to bring in someone who can be a difference maker and who can develop quarterbacks because that's not Kirk's forte. It's just not. He would admit that. Um, bring in someone that can really take you to the next level. And I, maybe that's, you know, maybe that's just the inner fan in me talking, but I, I think that's reasonable to think that Iowa can find somebody who can, um, at, at least take a big, because Iowa, we, we've ran the metrics. Iowa quarterback play has not been good. Somebody, there's would, gotta be somebody out there that can generous. Yeah, Absolutely. So I, the second most obvious question that needs to be asked is, uh, what are the odds of JT Daniels comes to Iowa now? <laughs> Did we talk about this? Because it was Corey? probably like 1% before, and now I'd say maybe 2%. Like, I, I still don't think this changes Iowa's I mean, who knows? Maybe Ken O'Keefe was in favor of going to the portal, but those decisions ultimately are going to come down to um, Kirk Ferentz, right? I mean, those... those. Well, yeah, but I could see kind of what you said in your last answer. Maybe he wanted to go, since he's not a good, as good as the offensive quarterback, he just wanted to go with what Ken O'Keefe told him to do. 
I can see that happening. If if Kirk Ferentz maybe now there's changes. If oh dummy, he understands that it's the most important position on the football field. If he looks at that quarterback position and sees the lack of production that we all see, um, and he sees a reason to go to the portal, he's going to go to the portal. I don't think – like Ken O'Keefe doesn't have more authority on that issue than Kirk. So that ultimately comes down to Kirk. I mean, I think that's I, – I think it, I'm safe to say that. Okay. And um, what do you think about in terms of steam? Do you think some of the scheme's going to be changed from last year to this year because of this decision? I, I don't, not at all. No, I don't think schematics changes as a result of this decision at all. And I don't know that they need to. This is not a move. Like, we're, again, regardless of what happened in leading up to this decision by Ken to step away, the fact of the matter is that Iowa just needs better fundamentals out of their quarterback. They need better decision making out of their quarterbacks. I mean, like these are things, regardless of what scheme you're running and what type of offense you're running, you need to, to know how to slide. You need to know how to step up in the pocket. Um, you you need to have good pre-snap, uh, a good pre-snap routine, right? You need, you know, there's a variety of things, understanding time and place, understanding down and distance. And those are things that like it or not, Iowa has failed at, at times, and more than you can live with, I think. And so that's what Iowa really needs to focus on. Maybe I've talked about schematics. I think there's certainly a, you can make that claim that Iowa needs to change scheme. But this specifically quarterbacks coach, I don't think bringing in a new quarterbacks coach, that that means the scheme is going to change. Well, maybe not scheme, but do you think maybe the. Uh, maybe they'll do with if Petrus is the guy, do you think maybe they'll be more reserved and type of. Because he throws a, you think turnovers will be a priority? Because there's been a lot of just bad turnovers. Do you think he he will throw the ball away more instead of risking it for? I mean, I would hope so. Game? I would hope so. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's part of. I don't know about throw the ball away more, but just you, you've got to be able to understand when when the right time to throw the ball away is, when the right time to scramble is, when the right time to check down is. I mean, those are all things that. I would think your quarterback's coach is helping you with on a daily basis. And it comes down to study of the game and, and the fundamentals. So um, I don't know. It, perhaps Ken was just to a point where he just felt like he didn't have the ambition to continue. I, I don't know, but I, I think the, the fundamentals are what you got to hope as a fan improve as a result of this change. Well, uh, Corey, that's all I really got for you today. Um, Congratulations to Ken for retirement. Hopefully he enjoys it. Hopefully Iowa will pick some the right guy for next year, and I will talk to you tomorrow when uh, Iowa beats Michigan. All right, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, talk to you soon. Okay. okay. Bye. All right. Yep, our line is open, 515-635-1601. And again, apologize for the, uh, the few technical issues. Um, not sure what's going on. You can blame Metronet. That's our internet provider here in Ames. So, of course, uh, they choose to uh, have issues right as soon as we're going live with uh, the biggest news story in Iowa in the Iowa football offseason. Right. I mean, this is the biggest this is the biggest storyline in the Iowa football offseason. And that's why we're live. So, our, again, our line is open. 515-635-1601. And I apologize um, for not getting to some of these comments sooner. Mark says Drew Tate. Yeah, he's going to be a big name. There's no question about it. Of course, he just took the job at UNI. I don't know that he fits the Iowa way. I know he was here. I don't know that I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some headbutting going on while he was here because he's a bit of a he kind of gives that bad boy persona. And, and it'll be interesting to see. I mean, does he skip from Tennessee Martin to Iowa? I think that's a risky hire. Um, I, I think some fans would be real happy with that, but I think it's a risky hire. Um, but it could also pay huge dividends because of he is a different personality. So although there could be some clashing between him and Kirk, I would have to think that there's also a possibility that he energizes that position. Um, you know, for instance, I, I know that you can't teach, you, you cannot teach speed per se. You, you're not going to be able to make, you know, Spencer Petrus, a, a four or five guy, that's not going to happen. But, um, you know, Drew Tate knew a little something about scrambling. 
evading pressure. That's certainly something Spencer Petrus needs help with. So I, I wouldn't dismiss that idea. I'm not endorsing it by any means. Um, but I would be a bit surprised if they made that move. But certainly that's going to be a name that people are going to be tossing around. Cinemaric says, uh, love Ken, nicest dude while I work for the team, but results are not there. Glad we will be going a different direction. And you have a perspective, sir, that uh, none of us have, and that of uh, apparently working for the staff. And and anything anything I've heard in my conversations with Coach Patterson, uh, of course, he knows Ken. Um, Ken seems like a really nice guy. I mean, I've never heard... I've never heard a bad thing about Ken's character. I mean, he's a nice family guy. Again, I hope he stays in Iowa City. I'd like to think that he considers himself a Hawkeye for life. Um, but yeah, there's no question. Um, I, I think Iowa needed something there, right? They needed something there. And uh, I think maybe Ken recognized that. I think that's perhaps what happened. Bob Stoops, another name that's going to be topped or passed around, but I just... <laughs> They're not getting Bob Stoops, Michael. I, I just, I mean, if Bob Stoops, if Bob Stoops was hired as Iowa's next quarterbacks coach, I think I'd, I, I don't even know. I think that would be a sign that uh, I've been living a, a lie in my entire life because I just don't, I, I just don't know how you go from from uh, being the coveted coach in, in in America to being the quarterbacks coach at Iowa. You know, the the topic of coordinator is is a different topic. And again, Bob Stoops was a defensive player. So I don't know why he would come here as a quarterbacks co coach, but like if he came here as an offensive coordinator, that would be more likely than I think a quarterbacks coach. And, and even that I don't think would ever happen. Um, defensive coordinator, maybe, but uh, unless I don't know, unless there's something about Bob Stoops that I don't know. Blake Morris says Matt Nagy would be uh, again, big name. We're shooting for the stars here, Blake. I saw somebody recommend this uh, uh, Matt the other day on our show. I get, I get it. But uh, I think Matt's going to have other opportunities out there. Um, Justin says, I'm just an outsider looking in. Iowa fans, how big is this to Iowa football? Does it hurt or is it so-so? Um, I don't want to speak for Iowa fans, Justin, because this is... Uh, I think I think there's I think there's some division. There, there's still some division with where Iowa fans see this program. I've gotten a lot of negative feedback from people who think that I'm way too negative or I've been way too negative about the quarterback position, about the offense. And, and I'm sorry. And people keep saying, "Well, you got to be a fan. You're a fan." That's I'm not I'm not a member of the Iowa media. I don't desire to be a member of the media. I'm not even I'm not even saying I'm qualified to be a member of the Iowa media. Yes, I'm a fan. Okay. Um, but I also started this this channel, started this project with Mark Rogers and Don Patterson and Gary Close to help Iowa fans be informed, to give them a platform. The fans are what drive this show and a platform for me to be honest uh, about what I see in the football field or on the basketball court. And the bottom line is the offense has been really bad. Um, and I think it was time for a change, Justin. I, I'm not saying that that's what happened here. I'm not saying that Kirk forced Ken out. I, I want to make that clear. I'm not implying that. But the point is, um, Iowa needed something because the quarterback position wasn't, it just wasn't working. Development wasn't happening. Um, and it really hasn't happened. Even when, I mean, you could argue Greg Davis actually did a decent job with, with CJ Beathard, right? I mean, I, I think that's, a fair argument you could make. Greg wasn't here very long, but when he was here, Iowa actually had pretty good quarterback play. But the fact of the matter is it has not been good since Ken got back here. Yes, Nate Stanley won a lot of games, but medals of being an Iowa quarterback. And that's a concern, or excuse me, an NFL quarterback. That's a concern. Certainly. I think you could probably say the same thing about Spencer Petrus right now. Um, and that's why I'm, I try not to knock those guys specifically. I've gotten accused of being unfair to Spencer Petrus. I, I, I'm not trying to be unfair to Spencer Petrus. If if anything, I've put a lot more blame, and people who listen to my show a lot can attest to this, I've put a lot more blame on the coaches because guys have to be developed. They have to be taught. I don't care what records you broke in high school. When you get to the Big Ten level, you have to be taught and developed and trained. And I And that doesn't mean shipping your guys off east to be trained by some private guy in New Jersey or wherever Tony Rassiope lives. There's got to be development occurring at the quarterback position here at Iowa. 
Okay. Regardless of how much you depend, how dependent you are on the run game, how dependent you are on special teams play, you've got to have good quarterback play to win. And yes, I was found a way to win 10 games. I get that. They won the West. They won 10 games with subpar quarterback play and development, but you're not going to break through that ceiling unless that gets better. Okay. So Justin, I, I do feel like it was time. Um, with all due respect to Ken O'Keefe, with all due respect to Ken O'Keefe. All right. I'm um, just checking here. Just making sure I'm not missing anything in the chat. Um, Brian says Ken O'Keefe wanted Alex at QB, so he had to go. All right. Here come the conspiracy theories. Um, I, I don't necessarily believe that's what's happening, but uh, Cinemeric says the university is giving him money for nothing. Um, that's an interesting question. So the the again the release stated that Ken O'Keefe is going to be cashing in on the remainder of his contract. So um, and in a little bit, I will reread that whole release because I know we've got more people here than we did initially. But uh, the exact statement that was made in the release is uh, the University of Iowa will honor the terms of O'Keefe's contract. It will honor the terms. So, Senator Merrick, I don't know what the terms of the contract state. I don't know if, if there's a – I don't know how that works. If, if there's a clause in there that says, hey, you step, in, you step away at a certain point – then you're not entitled to anything else. Because if even like if Ken O'Keefe steps away now, which he is, and his contract ran until 2025, but the contract states that if you step away, you're entitled to nothing, then I would guess that Ken O'Keefe is not going to get anything. That would be the university honoring the terms of the contract. But again, I don't have the contract, so I don't I don't know. Um, it will be interesting if if and when that um, when that news breaks. Tanner says, give us Tate. Mario Verduccio. That name has been tossed around already. Matt Nagy, yep, I, I got that one earlier. Uh, ben says, wasn't Drew Tate hired by you and I? Absolutely. But Ben, you and I both know that um, that's not going to stop Iowa from going after somebody. Uh, i give you a perfect example. George Barnett was at Miami, Ohio. Iowa's current uh, offensive line coach. He was at Miami, Ohio. He then took a job at Tulane. And before he even coached a game, he was hired by Iowa. So just because Drew Tate was hired by you and I doesn't mean that he's not going to be hired by Iowa. And I'm not saying you're implying that, Ben, but I think we have to be, I think we have to acknowledge that, that it by no means is an indication that he will not be hired here. I think if anything, it's be more of an indication that he's got a better chance to be hired here because obviously you and I like what they saw. And obviously that means Drew Tate is willing to be back in Iowa. It means that Drew Tate is already moving here. I mean, how, how far is Cedar Falls from, from Iowa city an hour? So I, I'm not saying that I, you know, again, to put me on the spot, to ask me who am I, who do I think I was next quarterbacks coach is going to be. I have no idea but I do believe Drew Tate will be in the conversation more than Ch Chuck Long. Well, I shouldn't say more than Chuck Long. I think Chuck Long might be in the conversation. And I, I don't love that idea. I don't love either idea, honestly. I think I think Iowa could probably go and get somebody who, I know Mark Whipple's not available, but like go get somebody who um, has a proven track record. And Drew Tate, although he was at UT Martin, has not proven – that he can be a quarterback's coach at this level. Um, and I think there's probably somebody out there that, that uh, could be that guy. Brian, how, I'm surprised it took this long to get to nine. I don't know. I'm behind on the chat here. Brian says the Don, I, I hope we're, we're talking about, I think I know who we're talking about. We're talking about Don Patterson, right? So yes, is anybody wondering, <coughs> I'm going to get a drink of water. Um, Don Patterson was indeed um, quarterbacks coach for quite some time. Um, I consider him to be an expert. He, of course, was the offensive coordinator here for years under Hayden Fry. 
Now, Don, the, 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 the one knock on Don, and this is the one knock, is his age. And I'm not knocking him for his age, but you and I both know the critics will knock him for his age. Um, I, I, I doubt, I doubt that that would, I have not asked. I just talked to Don before I went live. I just talked to Don and, um, you know, just kind of got his reaction on the news. And, and of course, again, he has a lot of respect for, for Ken O'Keefe. Um, and, and I didn't bring this topic up with him. And, um, again, I, I, Don is such a humble guy. He would by no means ever pander for a job. And I don't know that Don would be interested. I mean, again, he's in his seventies. I think Don is, I'd have to ask Don. He's 70. Boy, I don't want to, I don't want to estimate Don's age too, uh, too high here. Let me look it up here. And, and the reason why that's a legitimate question, Brian, is because he does live in Iowa city. Yeah. According to this is he's 71. So, uh, He's older than than Kirk, and he's older than Ken, so I I, I don't see it happening, but he is right there, and um, I mean if I was Kirk Ferentz and I was that I'd at least think about it, right? I'd at least think about it. Maybe that's crazy, but boy, especially if Kirk Ferentz is only planning on being here for three to four more years. I know his contract goes until the end of twenty nine. If Kirk Ferentz is only planning on being here two two to three more years, then. Maybe you, maybe Don Patterson is a is a a stopgap, if you will. I have no idea, but just for the record, I have not asked Don this question, and um, I want to make it clear that uh, Don has never brought it up to me, and and probably wouldn't because uh, he, he has a lot of respect for Kirk Ferentz, Ken O'Keefe, and that program. This is a very very valid question, and I'll tell you what else is a very valid question, Michael, is how does this affect Carson May? So, so Michael asks, how does this affect Marco Linez? I'm asking, how does it affect Carson May? Because Carson May is, yeah, I know he signed his letter of intent. But believe you me, if he wants out, he'll get, he'll, he'll be able to, first of all, you've got the one-time transfer, right? Um, and even if you didn't, my guess is you'd probably be able to leave, given the fact that this was a sudden coaching change. Um, even if you needed to um, file for a waiver. Um, I don't know how it affects Marco. This is going to be very, very intriguing. Carson May spoke very highly of from everything I've read, and I have not spoken with with Carson. He spoke very highly of Ken O'Keefe. So Carson May and Marco Linez are the, are the names to watch right now. Can Iowa hang on to both of them? That's the question. Um, I would guess that they would. I would guess that they, especially Carson, because Carson again, he's already he's already signed his letter, um, and this. You could argue that this kind of sucks for Carson May. Like, as an Iowa fan, and you want him, if you like Carson May and you like the idea of him being here, I mean, can we acknowledge that this kind of sucks for him? If he was coming here because of Ken O'Keefe specifically, this sucks to have this announcement made. I mean, what, two months? No, what, yeah, two and a half months, three months after you signed. That's... um. That's tough, and I feel for him if that's if that's the case. Um, but that's a very good question, Michael, and I think uh, that's yet to be determined. Courtney says the signal's much better than when we started. Good, very good. I, I I'm glad to hear that. And uh, like I said, never hardly ever have internet issues here. And then all of a sudden, when we're uh, trying to <laughs> go live, <laughs> the uh, the internet issues start. So. Uh, Alan says he is okay with Drew Tate. Um, Cole, thank you for this. Um, Verducho was at Northern Iowa from 01 to 14, Missouri State in 15, UCF 16, 17, Nebraska 18 to 21. I think it's, I mean, again, I, I'd have to do more. Uh, I'd have to do more digging on, on him because Cole, I just don't know him as well as you do. And I believe, I believe, um, he was released of his duties by Nebraska. Am I correct in saying that? Um, so I don't know. I mean, is he a, is he a legitimate option? I think that's a question. Um, Blake is, is high on the Matt Nagy train. There's no question about that. Um, Cole says, what if the new quarterbacks coach can bring a quarterback with him? Logan Smothers from Nebraska and Mario Verduccio. Does Iowa want Logan Smothers? That's the question. Do, would Iowa want Logan Smothers? He has not proven himself. Yeah, he had one one bright moment last year against Iowa. I think that's a big question. Does <laughs> it would that happen? I have no idea. 
Um, it's a good question. Um, but again, my, my biggest, my biggest thinking right now is what happens with Carson May and Marco Linez. That is my, that's my question. All right. Um, let's see here. Cooper may not change the scheme in any way, but maybe it could change the mindset and philosophy of our quarterbacks. I wouldn't rule anything out. Um, I think a lot of that will be dependent on who Iowa brings in there. But yeah, scheme wise, I just don't see anything changing. Um, I don't see anything substantial changing. Um, but w- what you want to look for here is development, right? I mean, that's just we keep t- we keep talking about that. I've been talking about that for months. Um, thank you, Justin. Call MetroNet and give them your thoughts. Um, like I said, never have issues like this, and uh, it's 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 always timed perfectly. John's here. He's excited. I think. I don't know if you're excited. If you're disappointed, you know it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet for me because Ken has been a staple of this program for so long. So it is bittersweet. Um, there's no question about it. It, it is bittersweet. Um, Ethan says, "I think Drew Tate is the next coach." How about you? We've talked about that. I I I don't know that I'd name him the favorite. And I mean, I literally I jumped on here at, what 20 minutes or so. Maybe it was a little lot more than that. But I just was scrambling to get the stream put together um, basically right after the news broke. And I was fortunate that I was working from home and and was able to do that. But, I, but my point is I have not delved into the, the, uh, the portal of coaches that might be available, but I certainly think Drew Tate will be on the short list. I'd have to think as will Chuck Long. Um, I, I just, I don't, I don't know about either of those. I'm not sold on either of those guys just off the top of my head from what I know and their resumes, each guy's resume. I'm talking about Long and Tate. I wouldn't necessarily jump to that conclusion. I wouldn't be shocked by either. 1977 Punks Unite says, you are the first that I know of to point out that uh, it's an issue that we have the highest paid quarterback coach in the nation in Ken O'Keefe with the results that we were getting. This is a good move for Iowa. And I'm sure I wasn't the first person to point that out, but I appreciate you saying that, sir or ma'am, um, I'm assuming you're a sir. Uh, I appreciate you saying that because, um, um, yeah, I, I did have an issue with that. And it wasn't an issue against Ken O'Keefe. <laughs> this was an issue with salary. It was an issue with what, what you're paying for the results on the field. And um, I, I think I think you might very well be right that this could, this ends up being a, a really good move for Iowa. All right, just want to uh, – we're going to continue through the comments here. Our line is open. But I want to remind everybody before we continue, if you have not already done so, please subscribe to the channel. We're trying to build the channel, trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. We've gotten the Iowa at the Voice of College football channel, Mark's channel, over to around 1,500 subs. We are trying to scramble and get 100 plus subs or 100 plus, 1,000 plus subs right here at this channel in the near future. So please, if you have not already done so, please subscribe and, of course, hit the like button and share this stream on your social media to get more people here and, and help our numbers always appreciated. Um, Avery says might've asked this before, but how quick do you think they will hire? Excellent question because you're, you're <laughs> heading to spring here in a few weeks. My guess is it's going to be pretty quick. That's my guess, Avery. And I could be wrong on that, but who else is on this staff? That's going to be coaching quarterbacks in the interim. I mean, Brian Ferentz doesn't have any history uh, in coaching quarterbacks. Does he? I mean, not that I'm aware of, um, obviously he's an offensive lineman. He's got some experience on the offensive line and certainly now coaching tight ends, but I, I don't think, I don't think he wants that. I don't think you want that as a fan. Just my thought. Um, you know, is it, is it before spring? I would have to think it, there's a good chance that that happens. I, I would have to believe that there's a good chance Iowa gets this done before spring. But again, um, I, I also think it's possible that, Ken O'Ke- the, the Iowa staff, I think Kirk Ferentz, it's possible he's known about this for a while. I'm not saying he has, but I wouldn't be shocked that he's known about this for a while. And if he has, then I'm sure they probably have somebody lined up. I could be wrong on that. It, it, that may not pan out, but I guess is that we're going to hear an announcement of a new quarterback's coach before spring practice starts. That would be my guess. What about Kurt Warner? <laughs> Isn't Kurt Warner making a movie right now? Or he just had the movie about him. And what was he up in? Wasn't he up in Cedar Falls with Peyton Manning doing something? Just not that long ago. Um, you know, 
obviously a big name. I, I don't think, uh, what connection does Kurt have to Iowa though? I mean, the university of Iowa. Um, I mean, if anything, wouldn't he have possibly, if he wanted to get in the coaching realm and coach quarterbacks, wouldn't it have potentially been at UNI instead of Drew Tate? Like, you know, maybe Drew Tate can come up to come to Iowa and then Kurt Warner can relieve him at UNI. Maybe that's what can happen. But, uh, no, I would doubt that Kurt Warner comes to Iowa to be the quarterback's coach. Chuck Long, Paul says, yeah, that's a, that's a name that's going to be tossed around. Again, don't know that that would be the best hire. I know he was extremely successful here. I'm not saying he wouldn't work out. I'm just questioning. I'm, I think it's okay to question. I don't know that that would be the, the number one hire on, on your list. Um, but certainly that's going to be tossed around. Destiny Pirate, you're with us as well, and he asks, what will this mean for Hawkeye philosophy? I'm assuming you're, again, talking about scheme changes. I don't think it'll mean much. I, I mean, I don't think, and I could be wrong in this, but I don't think Ken O'Keefe was the guy pulling the strings on play calling. Um, I'm sure he had a say in game plan. Uh, he had a say in who started, but ultimately those decisions would come down to Kirk Ferentz and Brian Ferentz, despite Ken's experience, I would have to think. So I don't think it'll make a big difference there. If you make the right move, you can certainly improve the position to where you're getting exceptional uh, or at least adequate production at the quarterback position, which is the most important position in football. We all know that. Um, I would have to think, I'd have to hope that uh, that, that could happen. Blake says, Marv Cook, another name. Um, yeah, again, don't see it happening. Don't see it happening. I know that's going to be a, you know, it's a household name. Um, I, I think Marv, you know, obviously his son was here, right? Just a few years ago as a quarterback, never played. Um, I, I would have to think that, uh, I would have to think that he's probably satisfied with what he, I believe he's what, coaching at the high school level, if I recall. Um, but again, possibly, I wouldn't rule it out. Chuck Long. Um, Brian brings up Don Patterson again, Chris Moon. He says, uh, I think Ken O'Keefe was okay at starting up, uh, at quarterback and in balance, they statistically, they improved after, but it seems he made them too risk adverse as their careers advanced. He doesn't like gunslingers. So that that's, maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. I, I don't know. I mean, and what's the definition of a gunslinger? Was C.J. Beathard a gunslinger? I, I don't know. Of course, C.J. played during the uh, uh, Greg Davis era. But I think that's a, a question. I think that's a, a fair a fair statement. Um, will Iowa be more apt to recruit, quote-unquote, gunslingers now that uh, Ken O'Keefe is not here? I think that possibly, you know, you, maybe you see something trickle over into recruiting. Um, I'm sure that, that Kirk Ferentz really respected Ken O'Keefe's opinions on um, quarterbacks and just evaluating talent and identifying talent. But I also question whether or not um, it's going to make a huge difference there. I just, I, I, I will see. I mean, I, I wouldn't rule it out, but um, like I said, the main thing right now, they've got a quarterback in 22. They've got a quarterback in 23, but they got to figure out if they, they got to, if they haven't already done so, they got to make sure that they do not lose Marco Linez. If they lose Marco Linez, then you're going hard after JJ Cole. I would have to think at Ankeny. Um, you just don't, you don't want to be in that position. You, you, because again, maybe somebody leaves this year I and mean, I think there's a good chance that somebody leaves this year, whether it be Petrus or Padilla, once a, a starter is named, even if that's in the fall, I would not be surprised to see somebody leave. And, uh, boy, the, then you're going to be struggling, especially towards the end of Kirk's. If it's Kirk gets older and older and older, it's going to be harder and harder to recruit. So that becomes a, an issue. Erica, good to see you here. What's happening. Well, I think this is a good time since you're bringing this up. It's a good time to uh, recap. So for anybody just joining us or who missed uh, the announcement earlier, Iowa quarterbacks coach Ken O'Keefe is stepping away from his position um, as quarterbacks coach at the University of Iowa. And I'm going to read this statement one more time. So if you heard this already, I apologize. We'll, we'll read through it a, a bit quicker this time. But for anybody missing the news, this is the entire release from the University of Iowa. Um, it was released just over an hour ago. And the press release reads as follows. O'Keefe to step down as Iowa quarterbacks coach. University of Iowa quarterbacks coach Ken O'Keefe is stepping away from his on-field role 
as quarterbacks coach. The announcement was made Wednesday by Moon Family head co- uh, football coach Kirk Ferentz. O'Keefe will assume an off-the-field role with the Hawkeye football program. O'Keefe recently finished his 18th season as a member of the Iowa coaching staff. He was a member of Ferentz's first staff at Iowa, serving as offensive coordinator from 99 to 2011, as well as wide receivers coach in 99 and quarterbacks coach from 2000 to 2011. Five of the top uh, 10 single-season quarterback performances at Iowa have come under O'Keefe's leadership. Ken O'Keefe was quoted as follows. My entire family and I are incredibly grateful to Coach Ferentz, the players, especially the quarterbacks I have been privileged to work with, the staff, the University of Iowa, and the great Hawkeye football fans for all of their support these many years. When you love what you do and where you do it, when you love being around the staff and working with tremendous men like I do day in and day out, It is hard to walk away, but I am confident that the time is right for me to step off the field and embrace a new opportunity. Kirk Ferentz was quoted as follows. Ken has been an important part of our football program for almost two decades. He was one of the key components of building our program's foundation 23 years ago and has been a friend for far longer than that. Ken hired me onto his staff at Worcester Academy in 78, and it has been a professional and personal honor to work alongside him all of these years. O'Keefe left the Iowa program in 11 for a coaching position in the NFL. He returned to Iowa City to coach quarterbacks prior to the 17th season. Kurt goes on to say, Ken rejoining our program from the NFL was a big bonus. While we will, while we will miss having him on the field on Saturdays, we are looking forward to him continuing to share his perspective and knowledge to benefit our entire program. The University of Iowa will honor the terms of O'Keefe's contract, O'Keefe's coaching career, has spanned 45 years across several levels of, of football. He was named Division Three National Coach of the Year uh, in 1990 after leading Allegheny College to the NCAA Division Three National Championship. Iowa posted a 10-4 and overall record in 2021, winning the West Division of the Big Ten Conference and earning an invitation to the Citrus Bowl. O'Keefe said, in conclusion, this Hawkeye program is in great shape heading into the future. I look forward to helping out behind the scenes while also getting to spend some long overdue time with my wife, Joanne, and our family. So there you have it, folks. Ken O'Keefe is no longer Iowa's quarterback's coach, stepping away from the program um, for reasons that were not clearly stated. Okay? They, they were not clearly stated. Can we can we agree on that? Um, certainly, the the... The thinking here is that Ken is in, Ken is in his 60s. Um, he, it sounds like he really, I mean, I, again, from everything I know about, about Ken O'Keefe, he is a family man. Um, I, I'm sure he wants to spend more time with his family. Um, but there was nothing in that, sta- that, that statement or that release that, that tells me definitively that, yes, this is the reason why he's stepping away to spend more time with family. I'm not saying that's not why. I'm just saying it's not clear in the release. Um, one would have to to think that possibly part of the reason here that Ken O'Keefe is stepping away is because I was just not doing well at that position, and it falls on Ken O'Keefe. Kirk was never going to fire Ken O'Keefe, and I'm not saying he should have ever. I'm not saying he should have fired Ken O'Keefe, but Ken, that was never ever going to happen. Kirk Ferentz was never going to fire Ken O'Keefe, so. Um, we had tossed around that idea um, prior. We, we tossed that around the idea that perhaps Ken O'Keefe would decide to step away. And I think, um, you know, again, whether that be directly related to age, whether that be related to um, family or performance, it's happening. And it's not a, it's, 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 it, it blindsides you when it happens, but I don't think it's, it should come as a total shock. All right. Let's get back to your comments. Our line is open. Our number, 515-635-1601. 515-635-1601. If you want to give us a call and weigh in on the breaking news that Iowa quarterbacks coach Ken O'Keefe is stepping aside um, from his role as a quarterbacks coach at the University of Iowa. The Real Hayden says, if any player is coming here because of O'Keefe, there's a bigger issue. I'm not going to say I take exception with that con- to that comment, the real Hayden, but I, I, I think you have to acknowledge the fact that uh, Ken O'Keefe is a likable guy. Okay. Um, 
and I have no reason to think the players don't like him. Now, if you if if you know you're questioning his performance, that's more than fair. That's been shown on the field here in recent time. Um, but I, I I wouldn't dismiss the fact that there's real reason to think that he was integral in getting guys like Marco Linez or Carson May here. I think that's a fair fair comment to make. Um, and again, kids are weird, like 17-year-old, 18-year-old kids that are making decisions on their futures. They're going back and forth already. Um, and perhaps you, uh, as a young person, perhaps you needed an excuse to to change your mind. And this could be an excuse. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not saying May is going to leave. I'm not saying Linez is going to leave. But I wouldn't dismiss it. Yes, we will discuss this with Mark Rogers next Tuesday. And, of course, we just had a show yesterday. So uh, there's going to be a lot of information to discuss with Mark uh, around this time next Tuesday. So I'm looking forward to it. 4.30 p.m. Central Time next Tuesday. All right, let's take our next call. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Who's on the line? Hey, Corey, this is Vincent. Hey, Vincent, how are you? Not too bad. Uh, just happened to tune in, uh, seeing the updated news on uh, Ken O'Keefe. Just wanted to give a quick opinion, and I'll let you go. Sure. <clears throat> Hey, um, first off, I, I just want to, um, I guess, show the utmost respect for Ken O'Keefe and what he's done uh, for the Iowa football program and his uh, many years there. He's done a lot of things um, for the players, for the for the school, um, and for the football team. So much respect to him. He's uh, much deserved of it. Um, but just to kind of, I guess, piggyback on what you were already saying, um, he's, uh, is there a correlation with him, um, leaving or the, the timing of him leaving and the struggles with the quarterback, me as a fan, I think that there's no doubt there's a correlation with it. Um, and I think just in my own opinion, um, it was just time for a, a change there. And I think it was at least from what I've seen so far, it, it, it was done or things transpired, um, in the right way, I guess, with him being able to, to resign on his own um, and uh, do it his way, I guess. So I just I think it's time for a fresh look at, at the our quarterback coach, and hopefully we can find somebody that has some, some more innovative uh, ways in coaching to, to help progress the quarterbacks uh, with our Iowa program. I would agree with you uh, com- completely, Vincent, and I think it's a fair question um perhaps you know and and again i've had someone i've had people state this to me that it doesn't appear and i've even observed that a bit um i didn't make it to kinnick this year partially because of the post game show um but uh in just observing ken o'keefe it was observed that he did not appear to be enjoying himself like he did maybe earlier in his career and uh, you know you don't want to you don't want to jump to conclusions that 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 necessarily is the truth i'm just going by observations the eye test, so to speak, that perhaps yeah. he, he just got to that point. You know, you get to that point. I'm not, I've not been there. I mean, I'm in my 20s, <laughs> so I, I can't sympathize with Ken O'Keefe being nearly, you know, 65 years old or whatever he is right now. But the, the fact of the matter is, I think would think at some point, some point you just are ready to you're ready. To, you're just ready to be with your family and, and kind of be done. And, and, and I think I think that's a, a real possibility. That's a real possibility. Yeah, you know, you're, you're making a good point. Um I saw kind of the same thing from a viewer's perspective or perspective watching him, you know, on, uh, on the sidelines on TV and not to say he looked disengaged, but that's kind of the, I, 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 I just, I guess I'd agree with you. It's kind of the, the view I got. Um, the more, you know, even more so, I think as great as he is as a coach and man, he's a great coach. I mean, he's, he's has so much knowledge um, of the game. He's, definitely a player's coach i just think it for him and it's just perspective for he's all uh, i think he realizes like look you know for, for me um as a quarterback's coach in the position that i am in um uh I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase it not that it's passed him by but i think um the evolution of the game is maybe just a, a bit out of his reach and so he thought well maybe it's time to to look at a different venture correct me if i'm wrong that's just my opinion 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's fair. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think that's again, fair. I don't know uh, I mean, schematics know, wise uh, if it's going to make a big difference and how much Ken was really involved with that. But I think it's fair to to question whether or not he just got to the point where it was. It, it was just time to move on. And I, mean, I think that's clear that regardless of the reason, he felt it was the right time. I think fans sort of felt it was the right time for maybe different reasons. Um, but you're right with what you let off with Vincent that uh, Iowa fans should be appreciative of what he's given the program. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, the next thing I'll say, I know one of the prior, um, or not callers, but it was messaged about uh, with Ken O'Keefe leaving, if it's going to have or could have a greater impact on the quarterback room. I disagree with that completely. I think anybody that comes and you follow Iowa just as closely as I do. Um, players do follow coaches. I, I wouldn't discredit that, but Iowa's culture itself, um, more often than not, or most of the time, players are coming to Iowa because of the overall culture and the entire coaching staff. I wouldn't say it's based primarily just on one specific coach. So I, I don't think it's going to have any negative effects on recruits, uh, the quarterbacks that are already there. Um, I, I don't think it'll have any negative impact whatsoever. Um, your thoughts, do you think it's going to have any? Could, could, uh, Vincent, could I get you to turn yeah, your Vincent, device? I'm getting a bad echo. Device. I'm getting a bad echo. Oh, sure. Hang on. Hang on one second. You're good. You're good. Okay. Is that any better, Corey? Sorry. Yeah. Yep. Sounds a lot better. Um, yeah, I, I, again, I don't know. I, I'm not going to jump to conclusions that a guy like May or a guy like Linez are going to leave again. May's locked here for now. As you know, it's not hard to leave though, even with a letter of intent, it's almost a formality. Like to have your letter of intent, it's, it, isn't it kind of a formality anymore? Cause it's so easy to just up yeah. and leave. So, um, I don't know. I, I would say, I would say that likely that Iowa, it's likely that Iowa can hold on to both guys. But all I know is that Carson May spoke very highly of Ken O'Keefe. And what was he supposed to say? I mean, you could argue that too. What was he supposed to say? He's coming to Iowa to further his education and to play football. Obviously, you're going to talk highly of your position coach who recruited you. Um, but I just, I'm not trying, I'm trying to prepare people because if, if something does happen, I, I think it's it should be point. I think this should be pointed to. Like if somehow Linez ends up decommitting, I think you can point to this day and say, "Hey, that probably didn't help the matter." But at this point, I know you've brought up Vincent. You brought up JJ Cole, or maybe that was your brother who brought up JJ Cole. His I, I saw the Des Moines yeah, that, Register did do an article on him. I believe it was yesterday, um, and he stated very clearly that Iowa has not been recruiting him very hard ever since they got Linez's um, commitment, which isn't surprising. But my thinking on it was. Either well, one of a couple different possibilities. A, they've known about this for a while, and they feel confident that Linez is going to hold true to his word. Or B, this has blindsided the program because you'd think Iowa would still be going after Cole pretty hard if you think there's any chance that Linez is going to decommit as a result of O'Keefe leaving. Does that make sense? Yeah, I just I don't see Linez doing that. You know, again, I think when players commit to Iowa or when they want to come to Iowa, they're coming for the overall. Um, or they're coming for not just one specific coach. I think they're coming because of the family culture, uh, the tradition there, um, the position that uh, our entire coaching staff puts them in to try to further their careers. I, I just don't see that. Uh, and I could be wrong. I mean, Linus could decommit tomorrow, but um, I just, I don't see that. Yeah. And I hope you're right. I th I'm really, if you've heard any of my stuff, I'm, I'm higher on Linez than I am on May, and it's not even close. I'm not saying that May can't succeed here, but because of Linez's athleticism and his ability to, again, he's a junior in high school, not, you know, it's still time for him to develop, but his, his athleticism and his ability to escape the pocket, even in, in high school, is different than what we've seen on from Iowa quarterbacks on the recruiting trail. So um, that that's the one that, if you're Iowa boy, I'm, I, I'm hopeful, but the, the, the problem is you've got, eight months for other schools to come in here and use this against him. Even if it, right now it's yeah. not an issue, schools are going to bring that up and, and point to the fact that, Hey, you thought Iowa was a stable place, but look, now guys are starting to leave out of nowhere. I mean, I think that that's, you're going to have negative recruiting as a result of stuff like this. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Um, I, I'm glad you kind of touched on Cole. I, I hadn't heard anything about his recruiting process. Um, I know you have far more outlets than 
it just us out or us as fans out here. I'm surprised we're not still, or I'm surprised we're not more heavily involved in recruiting him. I just, I've watched his tape. God, he just has, he's got a really good arm. Um, he's obviously mobile. I just, I hope we do a better job or put more emphasis or effort, excuse me, into trying to recruit that kid, especially a homegrown kid. Um, to uh to come to Iowa. Hopefully we do that. I, I you know, we'll see. I, I don't see I don't see them taking more than one guy. But I, what I will say is the Des Moines Register made a point of, of saying that um they have not stopped recruiting him. And but see that that could also be the f- just simple fact that you want to have him as a as a resource, as a backup in case Linez does decide to go somewhere else. I mean regardless of Ken O'Keefe's decision I mean, you don't want to be left in the, the problem is there's probably not going to have an opportunity. I don't know what JJ Cole's um, timeline is right now, but my guess is that he's going to be committed before Linez were to decommit. If, if he did, if that makes sense. I mean, I don't see Linez just decommitting tomorrow. Yeah. And, and it sounds like Iowa state is really going after JJ Cole hard. Um, we just had um, a kid here in, in story County, Nevada, um, Carson Rhodes, big tight end that Iowa was recruiting. He just committed to Iowa state (laughs) over the weekend. And it just seems like kids are are committing earlier and earlier now. So, you know, you you just, you're right. You've got to, you've got to really pull out all the stops to keep a guy like Linez committed um, and and even past signing day in December. Yeah. You, you said it was, you were doing a show with your uh, cohort, um, cohort from the voice of college football i can't think of his name but mark you yep. mentioned that very thing yeah mark you guys have talked about you know you, just because you get the commitment it's still a recruiting process and man you're absolutely right in that especially with the landscape of college football and committing decommitting transfer portal man you hit the nail on the head with that um a real quick question i'll let you go do, do you think um the guy with stays in house and promotes within for the quarterback uh, coach position, do you think they they step outside of that box? What do you think? Um, I I would have to think they're going to step outside of of an in house hire. I mean, and I'll throw this back to you, Vincent. I'm not expecting you to give me an answer, but who who would they hire internally that's qualified to coach quarterbacks? You know, the <laughs> the first name that comes to my mind, but he's such a good special teams coordinator. I I I can't see you moving Lavar. Uh, Woods, but man, I think he would be an excellent candidate to come in and uh, be your next quarterback coach just because of he's an innovative guy, even though he's a defensive mindset, you know, playing linebacker uh, for Iowa in the NFL. But I, just, I think he'd be a real good guy to look at, um, see what kind of ideas he would have. He's certainly a player's coach. Um, that's something I'd like to see, uh, but that's just me. That's just me as a fan. Yeah. I mean, I know people, I mean, I hear a lot of fans talking about how they want LeVar Woods to be the next head coach at Iowa. And I'm not saying it's not possible, but, and, and, and certainly quarterbacks coach, he doesn't have to, he's never called plays. So um, it, it's hard for me to, to believe that he's going to be elevated to a coordinator position. Well, not a coordinator, but head coach. If he's never called plays in his life, that's just, yeah. that normally doesn't happen. You don't often see a guy go from special teams coordinator to head coach. Um, I have no idea yeah. if he knows anything about quarterback. So Vincent, I mean, I have no idea. Um, like yeah. I said, people kept recommending Bob Stoops. I don't, I think Bob Stoops, my guess would be, and I'd love to be able to talk to Bob about this, but my guess, if you ask Bob Stoops, Hey, how would you feel about accepting a, a quarterback job, quarterback coach's job? And the first thing that he's probably thinking is why would I do that? Because I'm being offered be head coach everywhere, you know, you can imagine. But the second thing is, I think he'd probably say, I have no idea anything about quarterbacks. I mean, I'm, and I'm exaggerating, of course. Of course, he understands quarterback plays. He's one of the, the best coaches to uh, coach in this era. But the point is, um, he's a defensive back in, in college, and LeVar Woods is a linebacker. I, I just don't yeah. see it happening. Now, maybe maybe they do that, and maybe he's the, the next great thing. Um, I just have no reason to think he would be qualified to do that or that he'd want to do that. Yeah, I, I don't see it. I, I'd love to, excuse me, I'd love to see it. I mean, just from a fan perspective. It'd be intriguing. Back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, get him back uh, at Kinnick Stadium, uh, back in the black and gold. But, yeah, I, I don't see it either. 
Um, again, the reason I think LeVar is I just think he's an innovative guy. He has a younger, uh, younger perspective on uh, players, positions. But you're right, he's a defensive guy um, from the jump. Um, and he's such a good special teams coach. I can't see that happening. But I, I, from, just from my view, if I'd love for Iowa to at least ask him, hey, do you have any interest in it? And if you do, what are your ideas? And just go from there. Well, I, I honestly, you know, the, the, I think that's a fine way to approach it. I think um, I don't think that's your first your your first call, so to speak. I no, think, no, no. I think, um, and I don't know that Kirk will do this, but I, I if I'm Kirk Ferentz, I'm I'm perusing the entire country and figuring out who I can bring in with the best qualifications. I look at what Nebraska did and I know he came there to be a coordinator. I get that. But Mark Whipple grabbing him from Pittsburgh. Um, that's why one reason why I'm actually pretty high in Nebraska this coming season. I know a lot of people are not, but um, yeah, I think, you know, I, I can't say to definitively that he would be able to, to be a candidate or, um, but certainly um, he has proven himself everywhere. He's, I mean, he's, he's done tremendous things with that unit um, he seems liked by everyone. I just don't know if he, I, I don't know. He, they they got to have someone who knows how to coach fundamentals and, and, and quarterback play and, and the simple stuff um, before we start talking about getting innovative and slinging it all all over the field. That that's just how I approach this. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's a that's a, a good way to look at it. Um, there, and there's uh, trust me, there's going to be options or there's going to be candidates out there. Um, they can even look at you know, guys in the NFL ranks, you know, now with the NFL season um, coming to an end, they can see if anybody or kind of put feelers out, see if anybody has interest from the NFL ranks on coming down just to bring um, a, a certain, to me, I'd say a newer, fresher look, but the quarterback position, the, the evolution of it has certainly changed over the past five, six, seven years. I think you need to have somebody in there that has that same outlook, same mindset um, that can, really progress and develop the guys that we have. Um, so that's also another option. And I won't take any more of your time, Corey. I always appreciate the calls or appreciate the uh, conversation as always. Thanks, Vincent. Have a great night. Appreciate the call. And yeah, I mean, I, I understand what he's saying. The LeVar Woods is maybe the most likable coach and the most liked coach from the inside and outside on this staff. I just don't know that he's got any qualifications to be a quarterback's coach or whether he would want to be a quarterback's coach. I, I don't know. Does he aspire to be a court, an offensive coordinator one day? Again, being a linebacker in college, I'd have to think he more than likely aspires to be a defensive coordinator, but I'm just speculating. S Buck 22 says, isn't it more, more likely that Brian takes over as quarterback's coach? Boy, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, unless you know something I don't, S Buck 22. Again, what history does Brian have coaching quarterbacks? And coaching fundamentals, I, I just, um, I, I don't believe he, I don't believe he did anything with quarterbacks at New England. I, unless, I mean, maybe I'm totally off on that, but um, no, I, I would have to think that it's it would not be Brian Ferentz. Just my thinking, unless you know something I don't. Let's get to our next call here. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Who's on the line? Hey, Corey. Chase. How are you, sir? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh, we're an hour and uh, 10 minutes in, and um, the internet is still struggling, but uh, at least we're on. Yeah, I've noticed. <laughs> um, yeah, I, don't, I, don't I have a couple on. of thoughts, I guess, on this whole uh, thing. You know, I think we don't really know, and I think, you know, Iowa media alludes to it too, is just, you know, they call it Fort Kinnick for a reason. So we don't really know too much about uh, how the coaching staff operates. Um, so I think part of the issue is, you know, that's why it's hard to name who's going to be your next QB coach. Um, but, you know, I think from just a pure QB coach perspective, I think, you know, it can either, this could really, you know, uh, help or hurt how the quarterback understands the offense, um, you know, fundamentals, obviously. And, you know, just some of the reads, I think that's kind of a big aspect here. And um, we just, you know, I don't think you have a scheme change, um, but if you can have a, you know, a QB coach come in, and maybe make it easier for the quarterbacks to understand what they're looking at. Um, that would be pretty huge, I think. Well, and, and that's one thing that, that we have not discussed, and that is this 
uh, statement that we keep hearing from Iowa quarterbacks, most recently from Alex Padilla, that the Iowa offense is very complex and that it takes quarterbacks a year and a half to learn it. That is something, and I'm not putting that all on Ken O'Keefe, but one would have to think that that is something that should be able to be improved under different leadership at that position. Um, because we're, the offense is not, I mean, I, again, I've asked Don Patterson the same question and he said eh, probably about a year tops to learn the offense, but to say a year and a half, that's a big difference between a year and a year and a half. So the complexity of the offense is, has, has been a concern for quite some time. Um, they've got to figure out a way to simplify things and be able to, cause there's no reason for guys to be here for two years before they actually get a sniff of the job. And I know Nate Stanley was kind of an exception, um, but I agree with you. I think those are all valid points and we'll just have to wait and see if Iowa goes out and hires somebody who has the resume that, I mean, I'm not talking about a Chuck Long or, or a Drew Tate or a LeVar Woods. None of those guys have resumes that I would say jump off the page. Um, and, and you know, those are all guys with connections to the program, but if Iowa can go out and get somebody who's actually proven themselves at this level, this offense could take a huge step forward because I don't believe the issues at quarterback. Yes, they are issues. They are significant, but I keep bringing up the, the fundamentals and you brought it up as well, but sliding, stepping up in the pocket, basic elements of being a quarterback at this level. I'm not saying it's easy to fix those problems, but good coaches I would have to think could fix those issues relatively quickly. Um, and I don't know why they weren't fixed with Ken O'Keefe, but I think that's, that's something you got to hope for that, that gets resolved prior to next year. I mean, I don't think that's uh, outlandish to think with a, an entire spring and fall camp that those problems can't be resolved. Right. And I, I don't think also, I don't think we would be, I don't, it'll be a name we probably don't know off the top of the head. Um, just because I think if you're going for bigger names, they're going to want to have a you know more of a say in the offense. And who knows, maybe, you know, Kurt goes out of, you know, his character and maybe wants to have someone, you know, have more say in the passing game. Um, but, Otherwise, I think you're going to have a guy that's more focused on just the, the core acquisition and not have much say in the offense. And I think that does limit you on some candidates that are out there. I can see that. And uh, let's be honest, Iowa more more often than not has gone with guys that maybe you you don't know of and, and guys from the MAC. I think of, um, you know, Kelton Copeland. I believe he came here from, what, Northern Illinois. You've got uh, George Barnett, who we mentioned. He was initially from Miami, Ohio. So, yeah, it's possible. Um, you know, Kirk doesn't seem to like the flashy hires. That's why I don't really feel real positive that they're going to go after Drew Tate, not that they should, but I don't think Drew Tate fits into the, the Kirk Ferentz mold. That's just my opinion. Um, but uh, I, I agree with you. It's, it's, I, if I had to put my money on something, it'd be on the fact that I will probably hire somebody that is not a big name. Right. Well, thanks for having me. Good hearing from you, Corey. And I'll talk to you later. Appreciate it, Chase. Have a great night. And yeah, those are all good points. Um, Again, the issue of whether Iowa will improve schematics with a new quarterbacks coach is a valid one. I just don't think or change schematics. I don't, and that's such a general term. What does that mean? We're changing schematics. They're not going to go from being a pro style offense to being a spread offense just because Ken O'Keefe steps away. But you know, little tweaks here and there, and again, back to the fundamentals. That's what Iowa I would have to think is focused on with this next hire. Bearcans and Baddies says nobody can beat the mighty Georgia Bulldogs. National champions, absolutely. Enjoy, enjoy the the uh, championship. The crypto badger says from a Nebraska fan, you don't want. Is it Verducho? Am I pronouncing that name correctly, Verducho? Um, so um, we had that recommended earlier in the show, um, and yeah, again, I don't see that happening. I don't know about, enough about Verducho. I mean, I I think again, I, I think I did look him up earlier. But it's been what are we on over, almost an hour and a half now. Beginning of the show, I looked him up, and I I think it said he was, um, well, no, he had somebody comment that right that he was at U and I for a while, and of course he just I think he just got relieved of his duties at Nebraska this past year. Um, I'm not a Husker, I'm not a Husker follower of sorts, so, um, but. Uh, yeah, this will be a topic that's going to be ongoing. I do think Iowa will make a decision. I mentioned that earlier. I do think Iowa will make a decision on a new coach in the coming weeks. I mean, you, I don't know. Do you really want to go to, to spring practice without a quarterback's coach? I mean, that would be about as weird of a scenario. The one position that needs to improve the most, you could argue, and maybe you want to argue it's offensive line. I think it's quarterback. 
that being the one position you need the biggest jump in, in, in you know, in 2022, and you have no quarterbacks coach <laughs> uh, in spring, that's, that would be a concern. So I think they'll make a decision soon. Mark brings up Terry Allen. I have no idea. What's Terry Allen doing now? Where, where is Terry Allen and how old is Terry Allen? He's, there's no, he's not young. Um, Terry Allen is 64 and let's see. Um, so again, I don't see a history here of him coaching quarterbacks though. And I could be wrong. Um, but, uh, I, yeah, that would be a hard, hard one. Uh, Cause my understanding is he was, he was uh, a candidate for the, for the job in 99. So, um, let's get to our next call here. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the storm. Who's on the line. Hi, my name's Steve. Steve, how are you, sir? Good. Yeah, I'm calling from Escondido, California, and you know, I I listen to you guys all the time, and it's kind of intriguing some of the comments that are made. Uh, if you don't mind taking one from out here, sure. Uh, I I think it's great that uh, he spent time with his family, and and I wish the best to Ken. I I would throw uh, throw my name in as far as uh, quarterback coach, maybe Brad Banks. Uh, a great combo type of player, uh, okay. and I don't know what he's doing for coaching, um, but it just seems that I, I don't want to be critical of the past, but it just seems like we haven't developed these guys. The last couple of quarterbacks just have not, to me, improved like they should or progressed. I agree. Uh, as what I think they should. Yeah, I that's not I don't think you're being overly critical at all. And I've been very outspoken about that. They have not. Anybody wants to argue that Nate Stanley and and Spencer Petrus took some massive jumps in years one to two or even with Stanley from year two to three. I think you're fooling yourself. I do think there were certain areas of, of their game that improved. I thought Spencer Petrus threw the long ball a lot better this year. Um, but I, I do think he took a step back as the year went on. Um and no, you're you're absolutely right. You, the quarter, coaches have to be held accountable, especially position coaches. Like if you're Kirk Kirk Ferentz, and I don't know that Kirk was behind this move. Um, I'd like to think that Ken recognized that it was it was the right time and, and stepped aside um, on his own volition. But no, you're absolutely right. The, the, the progression of that position, the development of that position, has not been where it needs to be. Brad Banks is it relates to Brad Banks. I don't know of any coaching history with Brad. Last I knew Brad was working as an agent. I could be wrong. Maybe it's not an agent, but I don't think he has any history of coaching. So I, I have a hard time seeing him stepping in here as a quarterback's coach at Iowa. If even if he wants to launch a coaching career, that's just me, but um, no, you're yeah. absolutely right on the criticism. There, there's nothing wrong with being critical because you're absolutely right. Well, like I said, I don't know his background anymore either, but it, the guy could run and he could shoot. I mean, he could throw it. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, if we had that, if Iowa had that kind of a quarterback and could be developed uh, with our defense, I mean, we'd be, we'd be, we'd be up there every year. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, I, I agree. If Iowa can produce just a decent offense, you're competing. You're, you're probably the favorite to win West titles every other year. I think Wisconsin's still going to be there because of the dominant run game and dominant defense, but Iowa's defense and special teams unit has been exceptional these past, boy, I mean, you can go back. When's the last time you could say either unit was down? Maybe, uh, I'm trying to think, like maybe before 2016, I think that was, you know, there was a period where Colton Rastetter struggled at punter, but for the most part, Iowa, say Ron Kaluzzi and Michael Sleep Dalton and now Torrey Taylor, and you've got Charlie Jones and Desmond King was exceptional returning kicks and punts. Amir smith Marset. they've been right. exceptional with both of those units, and the offense is the one thing missing. And I think if uh, if we could have uh, somebody that can run and throw the ball, it makes it a lot easier on the offensive lineman blocking schemes, et cetera, that you don't have to hold them as long. Uh, it's It's a bigger threat. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they, they, they need, I, 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 I would, I would definitely approve of a mobile quarterback. That's why I'm high on line is in 23. Now, of course he doesn't get here till 23. That's why I was so outspoken about Iowa going to the portal. And I know, I don't know if you got tired of me talking about it. I got tired of talking about it and it no. was clear that Iowa was not going to make a move there, but that's part of the reason why I was so high on them going to the portal, because I don't think, I mean, I think it's clear. Spencer Petrus is never going to be a mobile quarterback. Alex Padilla is more mobile. We don't know Joey Labas how mobile he is. They lost a, a mobile quarterback, somewhat mobile quarterback in Deuce Hogan. 
I do think that's a big aspect of this. If the offensive line isn't going to be exceptional, like what you have at Wisconsin year after year, you're going to have to figure out a way to offset that. And I think you do that possibly through a mobile quarterback. And Iowa hasn't had a good one in, in quite some time. Right. And, and look at some of the teams in, in the Big Ten that have turned things around with the portal. I mean, we've, uh, you know, Maryland, I mean, people that were just nobody and have just turned things around because they did go to the portal. Now, Maryland is a, is a good example, too, though. I, I'll say this. Maryland is a good example this year of being a team that has really been hurt by the means of the portal. I think they lead division one in portal entries. They have lost like 21 guys or more, but you're right. Uh, Talia Tagovailoa is a perfect example of a guy who left Alabama and went to, to Maryland and has been very good for the Terrapins. So, um, and I saw a graphic earlier today on Twitter from rivals, basically making fun of the people who bash the portal because as soon as Dabble Sweeney, Sweeney is a perfect opportunity. Guys have left Clemson. Dabble's crying about it because he feels like the portal's hurting college football. But as soon as you uh, are able to grab somebody that you feel will help your program, all of a sudden the portal's going to change things for the better and it's the best thing on earth. So I agree. It's here to stay. I've said this over and over again. It's here to stay. So you've got to take advantage of it if you're, if you're Iowa. Right. And, and uh, you know, the, I've never liked like Coach Franklin because he, he always, to me, he always puts, never puts the uh, second, third team and he tries to run up the score to try to get a uh, front end uh, rating of his team. You know, uh, when you should be playing, you're playing everybody on your team to find out, you know, who can play and, yeah. uh, you know, and not just sit on the bench. But, uh, that guy uh, has, you know, he has, uh, I don't know if you've covered him. He, he has really got some players this off season already from the portal. Yes, he has. He's gotten one that Iowa wanted in Hunter Norzad, which was a huge miss for Iowa in the portal. So right. yeah, you're you're right. Uh, you've got to be willing to use it. Iowa is the only Big Ten school that has not gotten a, a portal player thus far. Can I ask you one more question? And I'll get off. Sure. Uh, how is the you know the with the uh, Kurt Ferentz got rid of the thing with the. Uh, uh, you know the all the you know I can't say what it, the I committee can't say what you the guys committee call that. Pardon? yeah are you talking about the and, uh, committee right what well, are you asking is, where is it's at back on or, I mean where is it at players, right now yes uh well there hasn't been any movement um last la the last statement we got from Kirk was at his press conference a couple weeks ago where he basically said that he's still considering how he wants to restructure. So um, I don't know a timeline for that. I don't know if the, the committee and members will be public this time around, um, but uh, we're still waiting on it. There have been no changes since the initial news that it was dissolved slash being restructured. I know there was a lot of um, outcry in the media about how that was covered, but as of right now, there is no committee. Okay. Well, thank you so much for taking my call. Appreciate it, sir. Call us anytime. Have a great night. You too. Appreciate the call and um, all the way from Escondido, California. So appreciated that. And Erica says, how did it go down? You did hear the, the statement uh, that I read from the University of Iowa earlier, I believe. Erica says, would one of the Stoops brothers be a possibility? Again, uh, none of those guys were quarterback coaches or quarterback uh, offensive players in college. Um, I don't think any of them have a history. It's a good question. Let me look up Mike. Mike just took the job at uh, Kentucky. I don't think Mike would, would fit in here. Just my opinion from what I know about Mike. Um, yeah, Mike's never coached quarterbacks. Mike's, again, he's a, he was a uh, linebacker and a DB's coach at Iowa, defensive end at Kansas State. I'll look up Bob Stoops here. So, uh, again, I know that the, we love the name Bob Stoops, but as far as a quarterback coach, so he doesn't have any any experience coaching an offense that I'm aware of. Uh, again, he coached DBs at Kansas State, um, defensive coordinator at Kansas State, defensive coordinator at Florida. And again, my, you know, Mark Stoops is not leaving the head coaching job at Kentucky to be a quarterbacks coach here. But I'm curious since we're talking about this, um, Mark. I'm just looking to see if, if there was some year where one of these guys happened to coach an offensive position and he, and Mark never did either. So no, the Stoops brothers, I, I, I would,
put that as a 0.000001% chance of that happening. Blake keeps bringing up Marv Cook. I, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I have no idea if that would even be a conversation. Um, w- you know, would Mark actually want to come here and be a, a Big Ten quarterback? Again, I believe he's at the high school level now. Um, Cooper brings up uh, Nebraska. Yeah, th- they made a lot of changes, including the change to bring in Whipple. Charles says Chris Winkie or Donovan Dooley. The real Hayden says he's happy. Ken O'Keefe is out. He'd be okay with Drew Tate. Chuck Long is too old. Need young blood. Honestly, I would probably prefer Iowa go after Drew Tate than than Chuck Long. That's my opinion. Um, but again, I don't have enough. I haven't done enough research on either guys and their their. Uh... Okay, we're gonna get rid of the spam. I apologize for that. Um, I don't have enough experience with either player or uh, either coach to say definitively whether or not um, Iowa would be interested at this point. Um, again, I know that I know Chuck was at, at uh, Oklahoma and, and Drew Tate, of course, was at Tennessee Martin. He's now at UNI. I get all that, but um, I don't know that the resume is there for either guy at this point. All right. I'm going to get back to your comments here. And our line is open. If anybody wants to call us, uh, J man, the beast 90 is Petrus the guy. I certainly think so. I certainly think so. At this point, I would have to think that, um, that he is the guy. I would have to think that he is the guy. Um, Blake says Kelton Copeland, because he played quarterback in college, maybe him. Did he play quarterback in college? I know very little about Kelton Copeland. I just know he's from, what, Northern Illinois. Done a pretty good job recruiting here. Um, let's look at Kelton Copeland's profile, shall we? So, um, joined in 2016. Of course, again, coaching wide receivers now. And I don't even see anything on his bio. I'm, I'm not doubting that he was a, uh, a quarterback in high school or in uh, college. I'm um, looking at Northern Illinois' website here. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just not seeing anything about his playing days. Um, yeah, it does say he was a quarterback at Emporia State. So that's a that's an intriguing one. That's a, that's a question. That's a, a good question. Um, yeah, that would be an interesting one. Who knows? That that's a good question. That maybe he becomes a candidate. I don't know that I don't know how fan how would fans embrace that I, I think that's a, an intriguing one how would fans embrace them hiring Kelton Copeland to be the next quarterbacks coach I think that's a real real interesting question um let's see here beer cans and bat bat is it baddies is I'm pronouncing that right would Iowa like a home and home series series against the big bad bulldogs um, I think, uh, I think Iowa fans would love that, right? If even if Iowa fans think they're going to get their butts kicked, I think they'd love that. It'd be a defensive game. I would have to think it's going to be a real good defensive game. Um, certainly Georgia would be the heavy favorite regardless of where that game was played. But, um, I don't think I was, we've talked about scheduling unless somehow, um, the big 10 goes back down to eight conference games that's never going to happen because they're not getting rid of the Iowa State series anytime soon unless somehow Iowa State joined the Big Ten and I doubt that happens so my guess is this would never happen uh, not under the not not in the as the program lies or stands right now Thomas will Iowa have a better offense in 2022 they need it the D is okay they need offense any skill position players needed bad and they need a QB, a new QB, really bad. Well, let's start with the first question. Will the offense be better in 2022, Thomas? I would hope that it's better, okay? But how much better? That's the question. They can't be much worse. I mean, the numbers the numbers are clear. Let me get another drink of water here. The numbers are clear that the offense is bad in almost every metric. So. I think it, it common sense would tell you that it's going to get better. Um, now, when you look at this as a whole, 
where does it get better? Is it going to get better because of quarterback play? Is it going to get better because of the run game? I would like to think that the run game is where where this starts at because I don't see a huge jump from Iowa's quarterback team, quarterback tandem. Um, you know, again, we don't know who the quarterback's coach is even going to be at this point. But uh, I'd have to think it will get better. I just don't know if it'll be good enough to be to get 10 wins. I, I just the, the offense has to take a big jump. I've said this over and over again already. And in, in order for Iowa to even compete for 10 regular season wins, they have to improve immensely on defense. And you say, well, that's obvious, Corey. You're stating the obvious. Well, no, not really, because they got to 10 wins this year in the regular season with this offense. The point is the schedule gets much more difficult next year. You go to Ohio State, you play Michigan, uh, you play a, a Nebraska team that I think is going to be better. You get Wisconsin, you get a Purdue team that's going to be locked and loaded. You get a Wisconsin team that's going to be locked and loaded. I don't know what Illinois is going to look like, but I have faith in Brett Bielema. It's going to be a fun season, but I think Iowa needs to take a big jump and it starts at quarterback. Is Iowa going to get a new quarterback in 23? I, I don't see how that happens unless something crazy occurs with the staff more than just Ken O'Keefe walking away. Um, and I, I just don't see that happening. Um, they're not interested in going to the portal at that position. You know, will Padilla or Petrus transfer after spring? That's always a possibility. Charles says Chris Winkie's coached Ryan Tannehill, Cam Newton, Kirk Cousins, Russell Wilson. J-Man the Beast wants Spencer Petrus to be the next quarterback's coach. Bearcans and baddies reminds us that Georgia won the national championship with a walk-on midget at quarterback. Hey, that dude's got some moxie, though. I thought he played his butt off in that championship game. John says, any good and well-run program would probably have the replacement already in line before releasing Ken O'Keefe, but then it is Iowa. Yeah, and I, I, I think I said that earlier in the show. My guess is that Ken O'Keefe did not blindside Kirk Ferentz. My guess is that this has been in the hopper for quite some time, and my guess is that they have somebody lined up. Um, I just, I have a hard time seeing them not, and I also have a hard time seeing them not having a quarterback's coach for the spring. I, I just, how could you possibly not have a quarterback's coach <laughs> in the spring? Um, uh, that's, that, that's sort of a, a weird, weird scenario. I guess it's possible. Certainly not one that, uh, that you want. And yeah, I do apologize for the spammers here. The more viewers you get, I guess the more spammers um, show up. Um, Thomas says to Iowa, does Iowa have any receivers back? Yeah, they got a lot of receivers back. I mean, you, you take Tyrone Tracy out of the mix, you get Keegan Johnson back, you get Arlen Bruce back. Charlie Jones came back. He's coming back for an extra year. Um, Nico Regani is back. I mean, you've got four guys with legit game experience. I think they're really in good shape at that position. They need a quarterback and get them the ball. They need a, an offensive line that can protect said quarterback. Um, because I think I think the wide receiver room can certainly get better, get better with separation, um, cut down on drops. Those are all those are all issues that that reared their ugly heads this year, or this past year. But uh, no, they, the Iowa's got a good quarterback room, at least in my estimation, heading into next year. Um, Brian wants Ricky Stanzi back. As quarterbacks coach, again, don't see that. I, I don't see that happening at all. Um, let's see here. Um, this may be saying the obvious, but they should look at teams with successful passing attacks and see if they could poach a quarterbacks coach. I, I you know, I, I don't mind this philosophy. My one question would be if if you're a quarterbacks coach who's coveted by other programs. And you're coaching on a on a team that a program that is run or excuse me pass heavy. Why would you come to Iowa, which is run heavy, um, unless unless it's someone that could ideally replace Brian Ferentz as offensive coordinator down the line? That would be a question. Here's the other question: um, Does Brian Ferentz? Well, I'm not going to go there. Let's not go there. Let's move on. That'll be for a different day. I'm not going to bring that up tonight. Um, Erica. Um, it isn't necessary to go there as Hawkeye Nation knows. What are we talking about here? Um, poaching? 
I don't know what we're what I'm, I'm lost in the conversation here. Uh, Blake says Ken O'Keefe got too old for the game. Darrell MVP, your call was so good that you asked every question that Iowa fans wanted to ask. Vernon, Chuck Long, yep, that's been brought up several times already today. Vernon, and uh, yeah, it, it, my my guess is at this point, um, he is a he would probably be a candidate. My that's a, just a guess. I'm just you know out of left field. Don't know that that would be my, my question is if it's if Chuck Long is really got that coaching bug, then why isn't he coaching somewhere? And you can say, well, you, Iowa would be different. I have no doubt that Iowa would be different in his estimation, but he, he was not real successful at Oklahoma. He, he's a very good analyst. I know he did. What is he? The CEO of Iowa games. Um, my guess is that he is satisfied with what he's doing now, but he would certainly be on the short list as well. John says, is there a quarterback in the portal yet that might come along with his coach? That's a good question. Along with his coach. Very, very good question. So JT Daniels is the only guy left, right? I mean, who else is out there? That's a, a big name that has not committed to a school. Has Tyson Fumichon uh, committed to a school? That's a good question. Um, but the, he, you know, he's not going to, he's not going to bring a, a quarterback's coach with him. Um, the answer to that question is very likely not. Um, I have not heard anything about Tyson Fumichan um, recently. Not a thing. Um, I know Hunter Johnson from Northwestern, who was initially at Clemson. He transferred back to Clemson. So my guess is Fumichan is not going to remain at Clemson. But I have not heard anything about where he's headed, which is very odd because he was a fairly big name coming out of high school. And again, he was a backup at Clemson. So that's surprising. Uh, question here from J.R. Hin uh, 60 our most quarter most quarterback coaches looking to move up to OC might Brian status hurt our chances to land a top coach this is uh, I'm going to call this the comment of the day sir because I think it's uh, I don't know this I'm not I'm not saying this is fact but if if the plan from Kirk and Brian is to still um make Brian the next head coach. And I know that's not, you can say that's not all Kirk's decision, but if that's the plan, then you're probably not going to hire a guy who is a, if a threat is a threat to Brian Ferentz and Ken O'Keefe was not a threat to Brian Ferentz. Ken O'Keefe was near the end of his career. Just like Greg Davis was not a threat to be here 10, 20 years because he was towards the end of his career. So it was an easy stop gap. Bring Greg Davis in. He's here for a few years. Now we elevate Brian to, to OC. That's a, a legitimate concern from our user here that could it help hurt Iowa's chances of landing a big name or even pursuing a big name because you don't want to step on Brian's toes. That is, or, or provide a threat to Brian Ferentz. That is a legitimate threat. And I appreciate you bringing it up because uh, I, I have had that thought in the past and I think that applies here. Um, Charles says, George Whitfield Midwest guy played college ball in Ohio at Youngstown State under Jim Tressel. Um, runs Whitfield Athletics, trained Andrew Luck, Jameis Winston. I think he also trained Cam Newton, if I'm not mistaken. Again, I have no idea what if he would be interested. If, if he's this good of a, a quarterback coach, then why isn't he getting why isn't he being offered top jobs? And if he is, he's must be turning him down. But it's another name. Um, I don't know that there's any direct connection to Iowa, but it is another big name. The real Hayden, I don't think any player that's already committed to Iowa will not make a decision until there's a new coach announced. I can see that. I can see that. Lemansky, good to hear from you, sir. Mr. O'Keefe, best wishes and thanks for all you have done for Hawkeye Nation. Absolutely. And uh, for anybody who uh, for anybody who criticizes me for being critical of Ken O'Keefe, I have been critical of Ken O'Keefe. And I don't regret being critical of, uh, of Ken O'Keefe. People are critical of me on, on this channel. Ken O'Keefe's making about 600,000 times more than I am, or he was, right? So you can take criticism. You're, you're working at a, at a job, you're in the public eye, and he wasn't getting it done. And uh, at this point, it, this this move is for the best. Blake Morris wants um, Xavier Wampa talking to recruits. Destiny Pirate, the burgeoning portal and NIL era may weigh heavily on traditional development developmental coaching. Um, Lomansky says, based on time of year, it won't take long for a new quarterback coach to be named. Yeah, that's exactly what I continue to say. Earl Hayden says, Jason Manson. That's an interesting name. Very interesting name. So 
you brought you, you've given me a couple names, folks. Uh, Jason Manson bring, being one, and Kelton Copeland being another. But neither guy has any experience being quarterbacks coach uh, at quarterbacks coach at this level. They both have experience as players, as quarterbacks, albeit for Kelton Copeland at a very low, quite a, a considerably lower level. But that is an interesting um, thought. Erica wants Lavar as the next head coach. John says Drew Tate. Uh, yes, he's coaching at UNI. He just left Tennessee Martin. But I'm just my question is, is he going to make a jump from Tennessee Martin to Iowa? Because that's what that would be. Robert says, will the new hire still send quarterbacks to the East Coast to get instruction or train them here? Touche. But but here, let, let's be honest. Kenny Pickett. I acknowledge the fact that Kenny Pickett. Um, received some training from the same guy, but Kenny Pickett was also coached by Mark Whipple. Okay, so it's people that want to make this big point about how, oh, you know, but because Kenny Pickett, you know, he ends up being a Heisman. Look at the jump he made. That means that, you know, Spencer is going to take this huge jump. That, that's not what that means at all. So um, I'm not saying it can't happen, but you, you've got to be able to have a quarterbacks coach here that can develop these kids. And, and I hope that Iowa goes out and does that. Yes, Kelton Copeland, another one. And that was brought up. Um, I agree with this comment from Darrell MVP. There's a 0% chance Bob Stoop does anything outside of Oklahoma, unless Kirk Ferentz leaves. I think if Kirk Ferentz leaves Darrell MVP, I think there's a legitimate chance he would become the head coach here. Laugh at me if you want. I think there's a legitimate chance that will happen, but I don't think there's a legitimate chance that Kirk Ferentz steps away. Jarrett, just got here. What happened to cause the resignation? Um, I don't know if you heard me read the statement earlier. Um, but he is Ken O'Keefe has decided, according to a press release that was released earlier, he has decided that uh, he is going to um, step away uh, from his position as a quarterbacks coach and take an off field role for Iowa. So whatever that means, um, that's that's the latest. Mitch says, I would love a different style of quarterback or just teaching quarterback some of the basics. Very fair comment, Mitch. Very fair comment. G-Money, wrong coach resign. Need a new offensive coordinator. Steve brings up Chuck Long. Jarrett brings up Drew Tate. Again, we, we're seeing, I knew this would be the, the names. Those are the common themes right now. Mitch says, maybe our quarterbacks will actually improve from year to year now. Fingers crossed. Eric acknowledges the Stoops brothers probably not happening here. Uh, you're, you're, you're very, you're, you're, most definitely correct at that position. And I don't think he's, I don't think any of them are coming over here to be a coordinator under Kirk Ferentz. That's not happening. That's just not happening. And it's not happening on offense because they're all defensive coaches. Our line is open. We'll be here for a while longer. 515-635-1601. 515-635-1601. All right. Lemansky says, big opportunity for our quarterback's room. Hope it's a younger guy and will gel with the other coaches. John says, uh, Brian, Brian Ferentz, his quarterback coach, is almost as bad as being O.C., He is development. Vernon says Charles Franklin Long Jr. is a former American football. Are you? I'm assuming he is uh, quoting this from Wikipedia. Yes. Uh, so St. Louis Battle Hawks of the XF. I didn't remember that. I just know he was at, at Oklahoma, right? Um, and I'm not saying Chuck Long will not be a candidate here, but I, I just wouldn't jump on that train at this point. Cole, I always get confused when Iowa says their offense is difficult. Maybe I'm wrong, but their offense seems so simple. To watch compared to Nebraska's offense, which seems extremely complicated um, with all of the motions and formations. Blake wants the uh, Blake wants um, was it the enemy? Is that the guy at uh, Kansas City? Um, Eric Erica Lavar needs to stay at special teams unless he becomes a head coach. He's successful there. John ball control offenses rely on mobile quarterbacks to get first downs. And the progressions break down. Not playing a quarterback who can do that is Coaching malpractice. Got some big, big uh, accusations here. Again, seeing a lot on Brian Fair, or excuse me, on uh, Drew Tate. Yes, Lomansky, thank you for this. If you're here, and we got 113 people on the show right now. If you're here, please hit the like button. Be greatly appreciated. If you can hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you have not already done so. 
tell others about the show. We're releasing content constantly this Thursday, just so everybody's aware of this. That's tomorrow. All right. This is tomorrow. We have a very special treat for all of our Iowa fans. That is a post game show with none other than Coach Gary Close and former Iowa Hawkeye Les Jepson. It is going to be an absolute pleasure to sit down with both of those guys. I mean, just uh, I might as well just go home. I might as well just let Gary host the show because uh, this is going to be an, an awesome uh, hour. Tomorrow night after Iowa-Michigan, of course, the Michigan-Iowa game at 6 p.m. will be on at 8 p.m., just after 8 p.m., unless the, the show goes long. Um, but we will be here breaking it all down, and, boy, it's going to be fun. This is a busy week, folks. So, yes, Lomansky, thank you for this. Please hit the like button. Much appreciated. Um, all right, let's see here. The real Hayden says, if we made a move earlier, we could have had Joe Brady. I think that probably would have been shooting for the stars. I, maybe I'm wrong, but, uh, my guess that probably wouldn't have happened, but we'll never know. Erica off topic. I know, but Corey's comment just reminded me who will be the new kicker. Well, you got Drew Stevens coming in. Uh, Kirk Ferentz was really high. Um, I'm going to look up at the kid's name. I really don't, I, I don't remember. Um, is it Aaron Blom? I think it's Aaron Blom, right? So he's the guy that Kirk Ferentz was very complimentary of during his uh, most recent press conference. So you got Eric Blom, you've got uh, Drew Stevens coming in as a walk on. Those two guys are going to be, unless they go to the portal for somebody, which is always a possibility of that position. Um, Typically not in scholarship, at least to start. I, my guess is that they'll stick with Blom and, and uh, with Drew Stevens. Um, Kelly says, glad Ken O'Keefe is gone. Wonder what he'll do off the field. I mean, he listen, we've said it over and over again during this show. Ken O'Keefe need, deserves credit for what he actually accomplished here. And he coached a lot of successful teams. Now, you could argue the offense was never very good, although it was good in 2002 with Brad Banks. Um, but just being an advisor, like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, especially if he can be an advisor to Brian, because Brian is a very young coach. Okay. And if Brian's going to be here moving forward, he needs help and he needs to be humble enough to accept help. And I'm not qualified to give him help, but Ken O'Keefe certainly, I would have to think is qualified to give Brian sound advice. Ben says, Bob Stoops would never come back to be the quarterback's coach. The idea is ludicrous on its face. I agree. I absolutely agree. Eddie Hinkle. Eddie Hinkle. Another interesting name. Again, we're, we're, we tend to think connections, and certainly uh, I have no problem with that, and maybe they will hire from a connection, but it was brought up earlier, the, the possibility that they go out and hire somebody we've never really heard of, um, or they hire from within. You know, Manson and, and Kelton Copeland would probably be number one and two on the list, at least from my initial thinking, and and it was brought up by the listeners. I, I didn't even realize that Kelton Copeland had uh, been a quarterback at the high school or at the college level. So that's uh, certainly a, a valid question. Joe Welsh says he feels like he's dreaming. I um, hope it's not a nightmare, Joe. Um, Lomansky says, time for a fryism. His higher assistants more talented than you and have the potential to be head coaches. Vernon says it couldn't get any worse about the offense. I'm assuming Kelly says need all new offensive coaches. 122nd nationally doesn't cut it. Hawkeye's offense stinks. Dave says one time I saw Ken in Iowa city during the flood of 2008, he and his sons were on the volunteer bus to go sandbagging. That's a great story. That, that that's, that's a good um, balanced uh, reminder that these people, these coaches that we're critical of are still human beings. And I think Iowa has, I think Kirk Ferentz has prided himself on hiring really good human beings. So regardless of how you, if you feel that Ken O'Keefe needed to step away, um, I think I said that, what, about two, three weeks ago? I'll have to pull up that that clip. Um, I, I had stated very matter-of-factly that if, if things weren't going to change, that Ken O'Keefe did need to resign. But that was never an attack on Ken personally, because again, I know nothing about but good things about Ken O'Keefe, and I appreciate Dave you bringing this up because it puts things in perspective for a guy that has been a huge part of this program over the past twenty three years. 
John says running game will not be better unless we have a quarterback that puts some fear in defenses. Um, Hawkeye three, three, six, seven. He hears urban Meyer is available. Raise your hand. If you want urban Meyer to be the next quarterbacks coach. Um, thanks for, thanks for going there. Hawkeye three, three, six, seven. Um, Vernon says an ex player or staff makes the most sense knowing Kirk's loyalty. I tell you, Vernon, here, here's the deal. And I think you're right. Um, as it relates to loyalty, but like, let, let's be honest. If you're looking at Iowa from a perspective of Kirk Ferentz entering probably the last five years of his tenure, right? I mean, I don't think he's going to stay here until the end of 29. Maybe he will. But to be completely honest, if I'm Kirk Ferentz, I'm I'm using this as an opportunity to not forget my loyalty, right? But to go out of bounds, to go out of my comfort zone and my shell and go get somebody that can take this offense to the next level. They can take the quarterback room to the next level because the fact of the matter is that that is what's going to really help Iowa. If Iowa has any chance, any chance of putting together an offense that is respectable nationally and will compete for big 10 championships. And I'm not talking about West championships. I'm talking about big 10 championships from now until you know, 2027 or whenever Kirk decides to hang it up, loyalty has to be in second place as it relates to football. Okay. Blood can't be thicker than water as it relates to this program. And it has been, I get that. But now is the time to say, yes, I've been loyal to my son. I've been loyal to my son-in-law. I've been loyal to my best bud, Ken O'Keefe. But now it's time to go get somebody who is proven Even if I don't like them personally, they know what they're doing. They've got high character, but they also know how to coach quarterbacks and and they're going to help us. And that would be my, my advice, but who cares what I have to say? Joe says he wants CJ Beathard to retire and come coach quarterbacks. Ben, I'd love to see some youth with the hire. Erica wants Tyson Fumichon still. Um, is this the regionals with Beck Mar High School playing right now? Um, I have no idea what that means. I, I don't have any idea what this any part of this question means. Um, I don't understand it. I don't relate to it. And I apologize to our user because I have no answer to a question that I don't understand. I'm sorry. Um, so moving on. Um, the real Hayden says Chuck Long did coach quarterbacks when Oklahoma won the national championship. Valid point. Valid point. I'm not saying you, you dismiss it. I'm just saying I, I probably wouldn't. That wouldn't be my first call. Maybe, maybe it will be. Maybe it will be. Um, but uh, probably wouldn't be my first call. John, Ken O'Keefe made 625K. I think it was more than that, John. I could be wrong. I think it was more than that um, towards the end of his career to teach Brian Ferentz how to be an OC. Erica says, can't stand those who think that fans shouldn't criticize their team. That's, you know what, fans should want their team to be the best they can be. I agree. You have a right to be satisfied. I mean, if you're, uh, and again, I had somebody rip me the other day because I made a comment about Iowa. Um, well, actually, he didn't like the fact that I, I even delved into the fact that Iowa hadn't gone to the portal. I wasn't criticizing Iowa for going to the portal, although I have in the past. But I was simply just laying out the information that, look, Iowa has not gotten a player in the portal. That is a fact. Regardless of how you want to spin it, that's a fact that Iowa hasn't gotten a player in the portal. Okay? So the fact of the matter is that you can be critical. You can also be supportive. And you can be both. I'm supportive of Kirk Ferentz, but I'm very critical of Kirk Ferentz right now because the offense is in such it's, – it's, it's destitute right now. That's, I mean, the offense, the numbers say it's in a destitute situation, whether you like it or not. And I understand people who get defensive when they, when they hear you say that, but you know, the, the quarterback position has struggled. The offense is struggling mightily. And, and that's that. Robert says, I think Corey needs fired. What did I say to offend you, Robert? I need fired. Who's going to fire me, Robert? 
should YouTube fire me? Should Mark fire me? Who needs to, uh, you know, maybe Mark, maybe Robert's just joking, but uh, I want to know, first of all, what I did to, to deserve getting fired and who's going to fire me. Who's going to fire me? Maybe YouTube will fire. Maybe Mark will fire me. Maybe that's, maybe that'll happen. <laughs> oh, okay. John likes the Jason Manson idea. Destiny Pirate says, you said you weren't going there, and yet here we are. Brian Ferentz, forever. I'm not going to what I was going to talk. I, I wanted to talk about Brian Ferentz and the future at that position, but I feel like that's best, best saved for another show. Steve says, what, what's the chances that Brian is the quarterback's coach also? I don't know how or why that would occur. I have no idea why that would occur. He's never – doesn't have a history of coaching quarterbacks that I'm aware of. Chase, after looking, another name to keep an eye on is David – is it Ray? OC at, at Vanderbilt, who stepped down this year, coached quarterbacks and wide receivers in previous jobs, played quarterback at Iowa. So, uh, good research, Chase. And again, people are doing more research while the, over the course of this show than I probably will be able to do over the next couple of uh, days. Um, so that is certainly a, a name that uh, I heard somebody tossing around about a week ago for for something unrelated to Ken O'Keefe. Um I don't know that that would be, would that be a lateral move? Would I mean, lateral move is what you need, right? For, for a guy who stepped down. I don't know why he stepped down from Vanderbilt. Um, but you know, would he come to Iowa to coach quarterbacks? I'm sure he knows Tyler Barnes would be my guess because Tyler came from Vanderbilt, but uh valid question, valid name, valid name, Sam. I think the largest current problem starts with the offensive line and, or coaching that gets better and the offense looks a lot better. I agree with you, Sam. And and I've had people who've come at me for criticizing quarterbacks so firmly. And, and I, I totally agree with what you're saying. The line has not been good. Um, and, and coaching certainly is a big part of all of these issues, but I still think there's a, a, a ceiling, a, a pretty significant ceiling on this program and, and on what championships you can win. You can win West Division championships. I will prove that this year, but I don't know how you're going to win a Big Ten championship or make a playoff. And if you want to do that, quarterback has to take a huge jump, regardless of how dominant the offensive line is. Um, because I don't I, I don't think I, I was I don't see Iowa's offensive line ever being dominant like what we've seen from Wisconsin. Now maybe it will be, but I have no reason to think it will. Um, and so quarterback has to to take a big jump and certainly uh, the line does as well, but I, I totally agree with uh, with your comment that it, it certainly is a big problem, and it all starts with coaching. Um, Erica does not have faith in Spencer Petrus taking a, a big jump in year three. Ben says, "Hire C.J. Bethard as quarterbacks coach." Best quarterback since Chuck Chuck Long. Best quarterback since Chuck Long. Are we forgetting a guy named Brad Banks who was a Heisman runner-up? Come on, Ben. I mean, I, I like C.J. Beathard, but best quarterback since Chuck Long? I, I don't know about that. I, I, do not, I do not know about that. Uh, Erica, thank you for this. Yes, if you're just coming here, you've been here a while, and you haven't hit the like button, please hit that like button. You don't have to smash it. You don't have to smash it, Erica, or anybody else in the chat. You know, you know I don't want you to break your screen or your mouse or whatever, you know, your TV remote or whatever you're, you're watching us on, but uh, hit the like button. Let's hit the like button. Let's not use such violent words here. Smashing the like button. <laughs> Appreciate it. Nonetheless. Um, Steve, thank you for that as well. And Micah's here. He says, just heard the word. And I'm going to try to pronounce this. Is it yes or yes? One of the two, Micah. <laughs> I'm assuming it's an excited expression. Uh, but, uh, good to have you here, sir. Username invalid looks at, look at all the likes pour in. Are they pouring in? I haven't even looked. What are we at right now? Likes. Oh, they're not. Are they pouring in? What are we at right now, folks? 64. We got 106 people, folks. We got 106. I'm not going to shame you. I'm not going to shame you, right? We got 106 people on this stream. Hit the like button, please. If you have not hit the like button, what are you, you're watching this because you don't like it i mean you know i'm not saying that there's uh, not better things to do at 6:45 but listen to me rant about ken o'keefe in the quarterback position at iowa but uh hey if you're watching i'd sure appreciate the like so uh please please do that um all right 
Jack says, did this just happen? Happened at about what four, just after 4 PM central time, the news broke and via press release from the university of Iowa, John, I'll throw my wish list, call Andrew luck and see if he has an, <laughs> and see if he has an itch, man. I love the names. So, so far we've had people bring up Kurt Warner, um, Brad Banks, Andrew Luck, um, who? what other kind of crazy names? And I'm not saying you're crazy, John, but wouldn't that be something if they brought in Andrew Luck to be the next quarterback's coach here? That would be uh, one heck of a one heck of a development. Uh, he says, also, any chance we bring in a quarterback's coach who can who becomes the co-OC? Not with Brian there. You're not going to get a co-OC. Not, not at least uh, an official co-OC. You may have somebody who's working behind the scenes with Brian, but that's never going to be public um let's see here the real hayden says a wild idea but purdue just had a successful year where they used three co what's code d am i missing something here they used three quarterbacks that's what he's trying to say uh yeah they did and they used them successful against iowa um, here is the rumor on the street. According to Charles Parr, he says, breaking news, rumor is Iowa is bringing in Charles Chuck Parr to take over as Iowa's OC, or excuse me, quarterback's coach. With him is a Greyhound bus ticket for Spencer Petrus to Cali. Okay. Oh, I see your correction here, the real Hayden. Code DCs. I gotcha. Um, yeah, not going to happen with OC, with uh, with Brian Ferentz here. That's just not going to happen. So, Erica says, I want, and I... And I've not brought this up one time. It's been brought up a couple times in the show. I'll address it. Erica says, I want Coach P. That's Coach John Patterson for quarterbacks coach. I know it won't happen, but a gal can dream. Here's what I'll say. And I, I've not spoken to Don Patterson uh, about, I mean, I, I spoke with him just briefly before we went on the air about um, just this news and, and just his reaction. Again, he's so um, complimentary of Ken O'Keefe, very respected. Uh, guy in that program there's no question about it um but um i, I would never I, you know i've not brought that up to don patterson and i don't i don't know that i will because uh you know don is in his 70s and you know he would never he would first of all don would never pine for something like this even if he was interested and would he be interested i can't tell you i i can't tell you um i i can tell you this that he does live in iowa city I think he was a, would do a darn good job. I think Don Patterson, you can say, well, he's too old. Whatever you want to say, he's too old. Kirk Ferentz is in his 60s, right? He's the head coach. Now, you can say it would hurt recruiting his age. Maybe it would. But what I can tell you this is, is Kirk Ferentz is here until 27, 28, 29. Could you get a guy like Coach Don Patterson to be here for five to six years? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And I, I, would it work? I'm not dismissing it. I'm not dismissing it. But again, this is me speaking. This is not Don Patterson speaking. This is me speaking. I speak for me, folks. I speak for me. More spam. Thank you very much, uh, bots. I appreciate that. Um, and, and you have every right to say, no, I don't want Don Patterson to be there. I mean, he's just like any of these other candidates. You, I mean, and, and again, I'm not implying that he's going to be a candidate. Um, I can, I can tell you when I talked to Don right after the news broke, it was, it was news to him. So he, he, he didn't expect it. Um, I didn't expect it. I thought it was a possibility that, that Ken O'Keefe could step down, but uh, I was surprised as well. James, the same David, is it Rhea? Is it Raya or Rhea would be interesting. Uh, Ricky says, steal Drew Tate from you and I. I'm sure that's going to continue to be discussed. Urban Meyer. Yeah, let's not get Urban Meyer here. Uh, Jake the Snake, it would be nice to have Drew Tate back. Um, Lansky says, don't take a poll, but I care what, what you think. Uh, does Hayden, uh, does anyone else think that if the Big Ten gets rid of divisions, that would force Iowa to admit its offensive deficiencies because it can't hang its hat on just winning the West? That's like, I've never, I, this is the first time I've heard this uh, question. Um, and, um, yeah, I don't know the answer to it. I, I really don't know the answer to it, but, uh, I can tell you that, um, 
I, I can tell you that it would hurt Iowa's chances, right? We talked about this yesterday on the show with Mark Rogers. It would really hurt Iowa's chances of winning Big Ten championships if you don't even have divisions because, man, you, then you're really fighting through teams. Because right now, you really, if you can take care of business in your division, I know you play three out of division games, but as long as you can take care of business, which Iowa basically did this year, the exception being Wisconsin, um, Wisconsin and uh, Purdue. If you can do that, then you're in a situation where you just have to go through one Big Ten East opponent. Now Iowa got what's a nice what's a nice word of what's a nice word to describe what happened in that Big Ten championship game. Iowa got embarrassed. That's a good word. Um, that's just what happened. Forty-two to three is an embarrassment. Right? That's what it is. Um, but you only have to go through one team. Uh, you, you you eliminate divisions, and you're going through literally having to beat out Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan State every single year. So yeah, fair fair question. But now is the time to make a move. Uh, Keno keeps moving on. Now is the time to make a move that can really help that position, regardless of what happens with the Big Ten Conference. Jake the Snake, any word on Casper? Um, yes, K- Kyler Casper just excuse me just released his. Um, I think top 10, let me pull that up here. Um, and I have not gotten around to doing a, a kind of a reaction video to that announcement, but I can tell you this, the top 10 from Kyler Casper is Ohio state, Iowa, Notre Dame, Tennessee, Georgia, USC, Oregon, Arizona state, Miami, and UCLA. And I'll show you one other thing here, folks. I'm going to uh, snap a. Uh, this is just just tweeted out here a few minutes ago by incoming Iowa quarterback Carson May. I'm going to take a, a quick screenshot of this and then show it up on the screen. So th- this is first of all a really nice gesture gesture from Carson May. Um, and, and I don't know if it's an indication of anything. Um, because we discussed earlier in the show, is it possible that Carson May would decide to move on because Ken O'Keefe has moved on? Because again, sounded like Carson May was really high on Ken O'Keefe. So here's the tweet from Carson May just tweeted out here a few minutes ago. Hopefully that's big enough so you can see it. Carson May says, enjoy retirement. Speaking to Ken O'Keefe, you deserve it. Thank you for giving me an opportunity that will last a lifetime. Of course, he posts a picture of him and Ken. This was on a, a visit months ago. So uh, very appreciative. You know, somebody brought it up earlier. You know, why would you come here because of Ken O'Keefe? Let's not underestimate this man. He has struggled to develop quarterbacks here, and he's not the only guy behind that. But let's give him some credit for what he has done. And, and certainly there are guys that like Carson May, who obviously thought very highly of Ken O'Keefe. All right. Robert's just joking. He doesn't want me fired. So I don't have to be fired. I don't need to be fired. Okay, thank you very much. Steve says, Chuck Long, been head coach, played in their system. Again, he will be on the list. I think there's no question about it. He will be on the list. Um, Charles says, does anyone know what Brad Banks is doing? Possible candidate. Again, I believe Brad Banks owns his own business. Uh, as an agent or as a financial advisor, something like that. He is not coaching at any level that I'm aware of at this point. Hyperlocal likes the fact that Ken O'Keefe is leaving. Um, Lomansky says, thanks for the portal recap. Packer, older commentator nationally states, portal is here. Change is inevitable. Absolutely. Got to use it. Got to utilize it while it's here and it's going to be here for the long haul. Did I say that Brad Banks got drafted? No, I didn't say that Brad Banks got drafted. We're talking about college quarterbacks, Ben. Yes, yeah, C.J. Beathard has been the most successful quarterback in the league for Kirk Ferentz. There's no question about that. I'm not denying that, Ben, but we're talking about college quarterbacks. I would take Brad Banks over C.J. Beathard. I don't, that's just my opinion. I and mean, You have a right to yours. Iowa did go 12-0 with C.J., and of course C.J. has made it in the league, albeit as a backup, but uh, made it in the league. All right. Make sure I'm not missing anything here.
All right. Let's move down the list here, get to the end of our comments. Sam says, Corey, I definitely agree the quarterback play needs to improve. We won't win the outright title without improvements there. I just think the line also needs a lot of improvement as well. We are on the same page on that. Um, Hyperlocal wants Brian to be next. Thank you for this, Robert. Gently touch that button, that like button, folks. If you haven't already done so, where are we at right now with likes? Where are we at right now with likes? Not to make this just a like fest. We have got, we're up to 80 likes. We still got 105 people. So some of y'all ain't liking this video. Find the little thumbs up button, right? I don't know where that button's on it on a smart TV, but please find it. Lemansky says, uh, I'll, I'll let this comment speak for itself. Tenderly touch that like button. Tenderly touch it. All right. <laughs> the real Hayden says he'd he'd poop bricks if he if he got Andrew Luck. Um, are you kidding me? Is there more spam here? Am I seeing this on my end, or is this this is an old spammer? This is an old spammer. Okay, I'm seeing old spam. Joe Welsh wants Coach P. Joe Welsh wants Coach P. I'll let I'm gonna let Coach P know, folks. So I'm gonna let Coach P Patterson know that people. Uh, Few, several of you have sounded off. Uh, I'm, I'm curious. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I know a couple of you have mentioned this, but I'd like to get a better feel for this. Who on this, this web, this, what is this, a stream? Who on this stream would be pro Chuck Long? Like if you, if you're listening to this stream right now, would you approve of Chuck Long as the next quarter, uh, next quarterbacks coach? I've heard some people comment on it, but I'm curious. we got 102 people on here. Comment below if you if you would be approving of that or same for Drew Tate. Comment below who you would like to see as Iowa's next quarterbacks coach. If it's Coach Patterson, if it's Drew Tate, if it's Chuck Long. Um, and I'm talking realistic options. I don't think any of the Stoops brothers are realistic options. I mean, they're just not. Um, if you want Brian Ferentz, you're welcome to put that in the chat. But comment below because I'd love to get before we head out of this stream. We're over two hours. Um, and we're going to have to head out here soon, but comment below because I'd love to hear everybody's take on this. Um, John says, tell Mark Rogers he needs to uh, find a new quarterback and quarterback coach. Erica wants a show with Coach P about the Ken O'Keefe news. I will talk to Coach P. I don't want it to be a situation where I put him on the spot. I'm not going to put him on the spot, but I'd be happy to, to pass this by him. Um, we had said at the time that we were going to take the – off season off. At least he was going to take the off season off. And then we'll talk later on about next year, but um, I'll talk to him. I, I, we might be able to get him on for a segment. Um, if getting, again, I know he's got nothing but good things to say about um, Ken O'Keefe. Alan says his opinion will be someone close to the opinion, uh, close to the program. Ben, now he's going to fight with me on, on banks versus Bethard. Um, banks was more mobile. The offense was a lot better under Banks. Let's look at look at total numbers because again, quarterback play is more than just stats. I, I get what you're saying here, um, and you're right. As far as wins, they were very close. Eleven and two, twelve and zero. We're splitting hairs. A tougher schedule in 2002. I, I think we can agree on this, Ben. I think those are the two best quarterbacks Kirk Ferentz has had here. Murky Stanzi would be in the discussion as would Drew Tate, but I would take both of those guys. Uh, number one and two, whatever order you want to want to go, uh, I would say those two are the best guys under Kirk. Lemansky, Iowa values character and recruits. Nice tweet by Carson May. Absolutely, you should give percent chances of of which team will win the West. That's a great project, and I will absolutely do that. Thank you very much for that, Tim. Good to see you here. It looks like you're a USC fan. Um, Ray says the most sound and experienced Iowan for the job is Sage Rosenfels. A lot of experience from years in NFL. Great perspective as a backup quarterback. Would he come to Iowa? Would he do? Would he do Iowa State dirty like that? Would he come here? Be a very interesting uh, choice. Steve Sport. He wants to be the next quarterbacks coach. Okay. Um, Allen wants Don Patterson. Joe says no to Chuck Long. Sam says, I would take Chuck Long for quarterback coach. Met him. He's a solid guy. He is a very solid guy. I've also met him. Um, 
He's a solid guy and listened to him all year on his podcast. He seems to know what he's talking about. He absolutely does. And he is a very, very nice person. Um, I was able to have a, a fairly long conversation with him um, back when I was uh, doing AM FM radio and actually had a, an Iowa games event come to town and, and was able to actually walk around a, a track and uh, talk to him during an event. So that was, that was enjoyable. He's a very nice guy. And I'm not saying that he, couldn't get the job done. I, I just think it's a, a question. He's, he's certainly on the list. I'm not going to protest if he gets the job. Um, Joe Welsh says he respects Chuck Long. Erica wants Coach P. Steve wants Chuck Long. Lemansky says, love Chuck, a favorite. Need a coach for a long time and with top resume. Here's a new one. Nathan brings up Tom Herman. Be very. Wouldn't that be interesting? Imagine them bringing in Tom Herman. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be interesting? So he gets him back in college football, uh, gives Brian Ferentz good counsel, proven offensive mind, and maybe successor to Kirk. Well, I mean, I, I that that would be a weird dynamic, Nathan. I'll, I'll just say that because you have Brian Ferentz here, who I think it's clear Kirk wants him to be the next head coach at Iowa. You bring in a guy, Tom Herman, who is exactly what I just what I said earlier in the show. What I think Iowa will probably not do, and that is go after somebody who is a threat who is a perceived threat to Brian Ferentz, if that makes sense. So good comment, big name. I question whether it could ever happen. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Who's on the line? Hello. I can hear myself, sir. Hello. Hello. All right. I, I don't know if that was a butt dial or um, it's weird that a butt, <laughs> if it was a butt dial, why was the butt dial listening to this show? You could hear the show in the background. That was weird. Call us back. If you tried to call us, <laughs> call us back. Destiny Pirate says Chuck Long or, two, or two other hire or other hires, two to four year contracts, give them a chance to hold the starting position, but don't commit past the proving period, just as we should do at quarterback. Vernon says Chuck seems like a realistic pick, not the best. Steve says, I meant Chuck Long, not me. Okay. <laughs> Vincent says, Ferentz keeps it a family affair. Mary Ferentz, new quarterback's coach. <laughs> hey, Mary does a good job with the, uh, the is it the women's, um, is it the women's club? Iowa Football Women's Day, whatever that is. I hear she does a, a fantastic job with uh, that. Cole, Cole says he wants Brian Ferentz. As a Nebraska fan, he wants Brian Ferentz. Uh, I, I respect where you're coming from there. Chase, obviously Jim Caldwell is a shoe-in for the job. Um, and if that was you, Jarrett, or maybe he's just saying it's a butt doll. Uh, pitch, what's Stanzi the Manzi up to? He'd be a great coach. Stanzi the Manzi. Again, I don't know. Last I knew, wasn't Stanzi working with some training company to, to cut back on Injuries like knee injuries or something like that. Um, I I don't remember. I, I you know he's not a real. You don't hear from him a lot. Um, kind of like Brian. You hear from hear from uh, Brad Banks even less. But uh, I'm I'm not sure on that question. Again, I don't think he's got any coaching resume. Jarrett says he's sending in his NCAA 14 game stats with Iowa. He might have a good shot. All right. Well, um. It's going to be a wide open race, folks, uh, at least from my vantage point, because I, I don't know who the favorite is. I, I, is it possible that Iowa knows? Yes, it's very possible that Iowa knows. Is it possible that Iowa will get somebody into that position before spring practice starts? Yes, I think that's likely. Um, I will be surprised if they don't. But I don't know who that is. Is it Jason Manson? Is it Kelton Copeland? And, and thank you to some of our listeners for bringing up some of these names. Cause again, I, you know, I jump on this show and kind of in a tizzy uh, trying to figure out what's going on with my internet. Hopefully the internet, it looks like we've been able to be at least stable. I, I apologize that the picture is a bit grainy today. You know, I haven't had this issue and uh, for as long as I can remember, but we were on here. Hopefully everybody enjoyed the content, but again, we'll follow this story. This is a developing story. All right. You know, this is uh, in the coming weeks, maybe days. I would guess we won't hear anything for at least a week or so. Just be a guess. 
Um, we'll, we'll get some information on Ken O'Keefe uh, or his replacement, excuse me, um, very soon, because I think uh, with spring practice coming up, I would be very surprised if Iowa was not somewhat prepared for this. And what a nice way to end our show by having to block some more bots. Thank you very much for that. And I'm glad I was able to take care of those final bots. All right, folks, reminder, reminder, please subscribe to this channel. If you're here, subscribe to the channel, like the video. If you haven't already done so, it helps us, even though we're going off the air, it will help us like this video, subscribe, tell your friends, help us get to 1000. All right. Let me check our subscriber count for anybody wondering. Let me check our subscriber count. We are at 906 subscribers. Okay. 906. We need to get to a thousand before March. That's two weeks. It's less than two weeks. February is really short. I'm not losing hope on that yet. Um, and uh, that gives us a couple of weeks before March Madness. But please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Stay right here for the latest around Iowa football and Iowa basketball. And we will be with you on this channel tomorrow night for Iowa basketball post game with Coach Gary Close and special guest, former Hawkeye, big man. Les Jepsen. Thursday night following Iowa-Michigan, which will begin at 6 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. We'll be here at 8.05 Central Time, breaking it all down with Coach Gary Close and Les Jepsen. Again, to send you out on the latest from Iowa City, Iowa quarterbacks coach Ken O'Keefe has stepped away from the position, and it is, uh, we assume now, that uh, it's a race for who the next quarterbacks coach is for the Iowa Hawkeyes. So we will talk to you soon. Thanks for joining us this evening. Have a great night.